The following program does not have a normal intro because I was really too busy smoothing other things over to get it done. So, Corey? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the following program. I'm your host, Joe Nierman, a.k.a. Good Logic. I need to talk faster because I can't believe how late I was. I'm so sorry, so sorry, so, so sorry. Mea culpa, mea culpa. When I say that, I don't mean like the name of Michael Cohn's stupid show. I mean, I mean, like the original way of what it means. I think, I think, I think I'm using it properly. So sorry. What is happening with StreamYard? Oh, no, it's what the heck is happening? The numbers are all by yogurt. They're all by yogurt. Something weird is happening with StreamYard. Well, anyway, my friends, I'm so sorry. I jumped into a Twitter space really quick because I saw that I was being, I was being. I was t being tagged by somebody who I happen to like, who's a good friend of mine, James Pirate Radio, and he asked me to pop in there and tell him the backstory and give share my backstory as far as the whole lawsuit against Judge Merchan. And I got tied up there, and I am sorry, really sorry. I apologize for my lateness. Inexcusable. Ugh. I wanted to share with you, I want to start sharing with you all, a little background here. There's a guy who I haven't seen in here in a while. He's a good friend of mine who who sometimes watches the show. Whenever he he'll pop in here with a super chat once in a while, he's constantly changing his name. And he's a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, who was my partner in fantasy baseball. I was in a keeper league. In a keeper league, that means that you keep players from one year to the next. If you're able to identify a minor leaguer who is, you know, busts out and becomes something special, it it, it's, it has a tremendous impact in upgrading the value of your team. So we're always, everyone in the league is always trying to identify who is going to be the next big superstar that's still in the minor leagues and there's all the scouting reports baseball america does puts out their thing i'm studying stuff on minor league baseball.com this is going back like six seven years i've been out of the league for for a long time now my partner was responsible for handling the hitting side of our team he was really good at it i was responsible for the pitching side and one of the last years i was in the league I found this kid pitcher who I was like, this kid's going to be something special. I really want to get this kid. I really want to get this kid. And he'd be like, are you sure? He knows nothing about pitching. I'm I was terrible at hitting. He knows nothing about pitching. And that kid, one of the last superstars, like kid pitchers when they're in the minors, I was like, I really want to grab this guy. It was a young man in the Cleveland minor league system by the name of Trevor Bauer. I believe it was in Cleveland. I'm fairly certain it was Cleveland. Was it Arizona? Was it Arizona? Well, anyhow, I think I'm, I'm, I might be misremembering. I think he might have been in Arizona. Well, time will do that to an old man's memory. Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer is a mystery as far as who he is as a person. He's the most unusual individual in the world. Like, he was always someone who was just outside the box. Even going back to, like, when he was in elementary school, in high school, through college, even getting into the – and going through the minor league system, he was just a different sort of guy. Different sort of guy. He used to work with, like, this – this – this bar that would like sort of bend as like some sort of like training isometric type of training thing. And everyone would make fun of him. This is even in minor leagues. Like, you know, they would make fun of him because, you know, they would, they would make all sorts of phallic jokes about him and his bar. And because it was like, you know, eight feet long and he would just like walk around carrying this heavy bar and it would just sort of make that kind of like noise when he was like moving it. He would warm up before games by basically standing on one side of the outfield and having a catch 
where he'd like throw the ball across the entire outfield, like stretching his arm out, throwing it at him and no, like as far as he could. Like, and, and, and then someone would catch it and throw it like halfway across the outfield. And then the guy who caught it would throw it back to him. And he would basically, he was like just this really unusual guy who was somewhat hot headed. He, he had filthy stuff, filthy stuff. And I was like, I really, I really want to get this kid. He had temperament issues also. So if he struggled and sometimes he would struggle with his command, he would start barking at the umpires and he was kind of like a wild man outside out there on the mound. At one time there was an incident when he was after he was called up early in his career where he basically was mad that a manager came to pull him out of the game and he took the baseball and he threw it from the pitcher's mound and just threw it into the, the outfield stands, you know, and stomped off the field. He just had issues. It was after I it was it was really after I had retired from fantasy baseball that he developed into being for a, for a brief period a very dominant pitcher, very dominant pitcher. But he had legal issues on and off the field and then at a certain point he got me too. Now he used to go by the nickname Bauer outage, outage like power outage but Bauer outage that was like his nickname and he uh was just a very very mystifying figure trevor bauer trevor bauer and then he got me too someone made a claim about him there was a claim that he had physically beaten uh, a girl um and issues with sa and then there was a second girl. He got suspended for the for the the assault claim. He was suspended, I think, for 194 games or something like that, like for a full season. He he had all sorts of legal issues. Eventually, I mean, he ended up going to the Dodgers, had some good times with them, and then yeah, the legal issues ended up hitting him in the face. And now he ended up having to go to Japan to like to to continue his career because he was basically chased out of the United States if he wanted to practice baseball. MLB MLB was just basically like, we don't want to touch this guy. We don't want to touch this guy. But man, things have changed. <laughs> things have changed with respect to the women who were riding high and coming after him. Things have changed. We're going to look at that very shortly. Very shortly. Let me just get to... Uh, let me just get to some of these uh, some of these chats that have been popping up here. Um, where was I? I lost. I got lost. Oh no! I am lost. This is not right. So, Ron, and gifting five memberships to Swamp Bear X, Tuxi, Christian, Christine McCoy, Judge Maddie, Brittany, all members of the following. Good for you, Ron. Hmm. Good for you. None of you are going to hear that. I did share. I did share a horn. None of you are going to hear it. None of you are going to hear it. I'm talking to myself, basically. I'm talking to myself, basically. Let me fix that up. So. Oh. I'll give you one of these now. Now you'll hear it. As well as Master Phillips hitting up with five more good good logic memberships. This one's for you, Phillips. Master Phillips. I'll give you the horn also. I don't know if I'm gonna get I don't know if I, if I got your folks who you hit up. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get that. I'm not gonna get that. That's not gonna happen. So thank you both. For gifting those of you who are now members of the following, I just want to point out to you. I want to point out to you that there's heavy responsibility with joining the following. Now, I'm not the leader of the following. I'm a follower, just like you. I have no leadership role whatsoever within the following. The following is about community unity, leadership training. It's not at all a cult type of cult. 
and it's um and it's about personal growth so welcome to the following welcome to the following we're so glad to have you everything's gonna be okay everything's gonna be okay has life been rough for you life has been tough for you You've been struggling welcome to the following the following is a healthy place everyone here is happy so happy so <laughs> <laughs> uh legal eagle has lots of experience with with gagging you think <laughs> totally not co follower number six says so in other news israel is bombing iran or something do they have baseball in iran that's what charles g was saying also israel bombed iran directly trying to hit their nukes world war three is here gas prices isis are going to go through the roof Gas prices and ices are going to go through the roof. I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen. Israel has gotten Israel has gotten away with strategic strikes a lot throughout. They got away with the strategic strikes a lot. Where they don't invade, they're like, okay, Syria. This one, you we don't this that you're doing there is not cool. And they'll just do like a quick strike and then it's over. So especially in the wake, I don't know. I don't it's a war when there's an invasion. I don't know that this is a war. We'll see. Hopefully, hopefully, has anyone messaged me yet? You mean to like pick up the ball for me? No. No. I mean, people message me all the time, but nothing. If, if your question relates to what I assume it relates to, like meaning saying, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, um, I'm, I want to talk to you about coming in as your counsel on that case. The answer is no. If you mean anyone outside of law tube saying, hey, Joe, I want to talk to you about your case because it's really interesting and it's really significant and important. The answer to that one is no, no, they have not. I don't really understand it. I'm not complaining about it. I just think I'm, I don't, I care about it in the sense that it just makes it less likely this is going to succeed. I don't know what to, I know what to do. I know what to do, Tim Pool. I know what to do, Ben Shapiro. I don't know what to do, Tucker Carlson. I don't know. I don't know, Mario. I don't know what I got to do. What I got to do. This is a big deal. Is Legal Eagles hot takes any good? I used to follow him before TDS. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We're going to see. We're going to see. I did a quick scan of his work on the gag, on the gagging, his gag work. I did a quick scan. There's lots to learn from him. Lots to learn. Lots to knows. Oof. I messaged you. He did. You see? He messaged me. He said, when you're streaming, he said, when you're, when you're up there in front of the appellate court, that he'll sit in for me and basically run a stream through my channel here for me. And basically play that so people who want to watch here on Good Logic will be able to watch me. I made the terrible mistake of telling Viva Fry that, <laughs> that it's going to be televised. And he's like, ooh. <laughs> I was like, you bastard. You're going to steal viewers from me when I'm the. Damn it. <laughs> uh, what to do? What, what can I do? What can I do? I was like, oh, so cool, Viva. I'll, I'll give you access to my channel. You'll run my channel. <laughs> He's like, maybe, maybe we'll dual stream. <laughs> I was like, uh, all right. He, man's got to do what he's got to do. Gag is not just, it's, hey, look, gagging is not just for infants anymore. <sighs> yeah, or for Valley Girls, I guess. Okay, so let's. I want to get back into to 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 Bauer. I want to get back into Bauer. We used to call when a, when a when a when an infant would gag. We call it cheesing. Like when they, you know, like like a newborn, like when the, like when they have like a, like milk, like sort of condenses a little bit in their stomach and then pops up. So it's kind of like cheese. I don't know if that was like a family thing or if that was something, a common term. But that type of gagging we always call cheesing. Is that, is that, is, is that a family thing? To me, that was like the term. But yes, I should correct this. That's correct. 
Jonathan, thank you for the five dollars. This is correct. Charles also did leave me a message, and he is an appeals attorney in New York. He is. He did say he's looking at it. I just don't know who he is, but yeah, I mean, certainly, I'd be if he's willing to just jump in and help out, and he actually has experience here. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to him. I'd be happy to talk to him. I he I know he's been looking at the papers. He did he did reach out to me. I did forget about that. I apologize. I should have. Uh, Alan Dershowitz is who you need to get a hold of. He said he would help cases pro bono related to this, and he's in New York. Contact his office. Yeah, okay. What's his number? Because if you can tell me that 617 number, I'll tell you right now, it goes straight to like some weird do do do. The number you're trying to reach is out of order. I try reaching him on his website thing, and when you try clicking send, it doesn't seem to send. So I haven't heard anything back from him. I don't know if it did send or not. But there's a whole little form. Give us your contact info. info tell us what you want from us. And when you click send, nothing happens. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I will tell you Mark Randazza did see about it, see it. Mark Randazza saw it. He did not see. And I'll, I'll show you what he said. For those of you who are not on, those of you who are not on Twitter or X or whatever they're calling it these days, I'll show you what he said. Uh, where am I at here? This is sort of a little bit of an awkward exchange. He's, he was asked, hey, Mark, because he said the Canon Reed case put a lot of high profile in Massachusetts. Maybe believe should be framed for murder. I'm agnostic about that. But in that case, the First Amendment has been under attack by the government. You should be outraged. And the cavalry has arrived. Amicus briefs in favor of opening up the First Amendment suspended zone. So, motivated by fiery patriots say, hey, Mark, have you looked at the following pros appeal to remove Trump's gag order? It's firmly planted in the First Amendment. He responded, I have not. I figured, A, if he's handling it, he knows what he's doing. B, nobody asked me to get involved. C, I got lots of stuff to do without tinkering in someone else's case, but I hope he has success. Okay, that's nice warm wishes. I gave him a little heart for that. And I saw that, and I was like, all right, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's get a couple of things clear here. Let's get a couple of things clear, which is why I quote tweeted that. And I was like, uh, I want your help, Mark, Mark Randazza. This is not good logic's fight. This is America fighting for its First Amendment. I jumped in because I'm a mid-practice law in New York slash registered member of New York City media, and someone had to. But I'm a commercial litigator. Countless attorneys are better equipped than I to fight a battle on 1A. You are definitely one of them. I'd happily defer the sooner the better to preserve the strongest possible appeal. Here are my filings. And I give and I linked into my filings. So I was like, no, don't say like you're not asked and no one wants you or you're meddling in my case or that I'm perfectly willing to handle it. I'm a I'm a commercial litigator. It's like, you know, you know what this is? I'm, I'm gonna explain to you what this is. Okay. This is there's a house that's burning, and there are, God forbid, little kids inside there. And you're not even sure how to work the hose. And you're like, okay, I sort of, you know, I've watered my lawn. So I'm going to sit here trying to figure out how to like put this house out, which is, you know, better than most other people around here who've never, never thought to water their lawn before. And maybe I'll go charging into that building. But then the professional fireman comes in there. He's like, no, dude, you really need to cover your face this way. And you need to attack the fire that way. Who would definitely do it much better than I am. But I'm here because there ain't no firemen around. And if a fireman showed up, I'd be like, oh, thank God you're here. I really appreciate your assistance now. I'm not the type of attorney, especially on something like this, which is much less my case than it is everyone else, even though it's my name all over it. I understand that. But that's really America's case, not my case. And, and I'm totally happy to let someone who's a professional constitutional law litigator do their thing in lieu of me doing it. Now, if you tell me it's just some other attorney out there who doesn't really know much about constitutional law either, so I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm pretty good at doing what I do in litigation, so I'm not 
excited about giving it up there. An appeals attorney is something that that's helpful. That person is going to understand the prop procedurally what needs to happen. So that's definitely, you know, that Mr. Holster, if he can be helpful on that, which sounds like he probably can. I'm sure I'm going to talk to him, likely going to employ his his assistance, if not give him the case altogether. Um, you know, I don't I just don't know him at all. I don't know anything about him. So, you know, I don't know if he's been practicing law for 15 minutes. I think he sent me something. He sent me something. I know he sent me something, and I was looking at it quickly. But um, yeah, and he could be the most, he could be the greatest attorney I've ever met. I don't. I just don't know yet. I just don't. I, I don't know anything about him. These other people who we've been talking about, their reputations precede them. So I'm like, okay, look, uh, I've never seen Mark Rendaz a practice, but everything I hear about him, he's like one of the greatest First Amendment attorneys in the country. Why the heck would I say no to that? Anyhow, so when I put this out here. Um, and then I was like, you know, I just said countless attorneys are better equipped than I to battle, fight a battle in one day. You're definitely one of them. And I happily defer. I was like, that might be like a little bit dismissive of him and his reputation, which was not my objective. My point was, I don't want anyone to think that I don't want anyone to be misrepresenting, like thinking like, oh, Joe told us he's got this. Because I ain't saying that. <laughs> I've never said that. I'm just saying I'm willing to throw my neck into the fire like an idiot because I think this is important. <laughs> but not that. And I also feel like, okay, I can handle this better than anyone who's not an attorney. That, I, that I'm positive of. And I do have enough experience with New York procedure to understand, have an overall idea as to what needs to, what needs to get done. But, uh, you know, so let's say another attorney from from, you know, from South Dakota, he wouldn't know procedurally the same way I wouldn't know South Dakota procedure. So I'm better equipped than that person, if, especially if they're not in con law. I'm definitely going to be better equipped than them. But there's a lot of people with better, better qualifications, and I'm more than happy for them to pick up the ball. Plus, I also have my whole Passover thing, which is going to be interfering with the critical period over the next couple of weeks. So not that there's much for me to be doing over that period, but other than research. And then, so I want to be clear, I didn't offend him. So that's why I said, just to be clear, while there are countless who could likely do this better than I, there are only a few attorneys I would readily have as much confidence to hand, hand the ball off to as Mark Randaza. That's a very short list. So this way he knows, I'm not just throwing him in here of like, oh, you're just someone else, so I'll take you. But I wanted him to know that I, I have respect for his, his reputation for being... Um, rather expert in these areas. Like I said, I've never seen him practice, but I hear I hear really good things. He responded, going back here, he responded basically implying that he really has too much going on. So I don't think he's going to be involved. He said, I got to pay 1000 to do this. I'm supposed to put down a paid file to do this. And, it, and, and I said to this, I think people are going to be very hard on him for this. And I'm like, that's not fair. And that's why I want to be clear. I never I never pass judgment on anyone feeding his family, which is what he's doing. You all think like, wow, you're making $1,000 an hour. You've got millions and millions and millions of dollars in the bank. So, you don't, you know, why can't you take time off? That's what people would tend to think. Why can't you take time off and jump in on this important case? And I'm sure he probably feels like if he started doing that, there's probably no end of cases like that where he would be needed and he would never feed his family. And that's probably true. So I said, I never pass judgment on anyone feeding his family. Your talents earn you a busy schedule, and people should respect that you have commitments. That was the only reason I hadn't had you, even though I knew that if you could protect our 1A rights as effectively as you could. So letting him know, still respect you, understand what it is. A little subtle reminder here that this is protecting our 1A, you know, 1A rights. And if, you know, the opportunity clears up that he can jump in here, that he probably i'm confident he would do it to handle this likely better than i would so anyhow that is the status that's the status there i have not heard anything dershowitz I haven't heard anything from turley there's another name that i'm forgetting now that i was thinking that i was trying to oh Sekulow. i don't even know where to find that guy 
Ron, Ron Coleman and Robert Barnes, I do not anticipate either of them are going to come in. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, if you can share my pin, my pin tweet, my pin post, that would be helpful. Uh, Tiamo Lisa, Mark Levin, you can call him through his show or through Landmark Legal. Well, I, I meant to call Landmark Legal earlier today. I actually have their number in my phone, but forgot for one reason or another. Viva to Megan Kelly to Alan Dershowitz. Yeah. Yeah. That might work. I don't know. Five dollars towards my business. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good to go now. Just $995 more for an hour of his time. I'll be good to go. I pre I pre <laughs> We're getting there. We're getting there. We're working it. We're working it. All right. So I was telling you all about Trevor Bauer and how he had all these different claims against him. So I want to share with you. This is what he – this is a video from him. He He's big on, on the whole social media thing. He loves – social media and the attention on social media so he's not shy trevor bauer he got me too a couple of times a couple of me too claims against him and the boy ain't shy so with respect to the first claim this was six months ago or so uh oh that's not working let's refresh that next what happened What should I steal? She asked. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. A text Lindsay Hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me. What should I? Lindsay Hill is the first one who claims, who made claims against Trevor Bauer. What should I steal? She asked another in reference to visiting my house for the first time. The answer, take his money. So how might that work? I'm going to his house Wednesday, she said. I already have my hooks in. <laughs> Wow. Wow. And she's sharing his text messages saying, I'm going there Wednesday. I already have my hooks in. Um, wow. You know how I roll. Then, after the first time we met, net worth is 51 mil, she said. Bitch, you better secure the bag, was the response. Uh, but, but how was she going to do that? Need daddy to choke me out, she said. Being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million read another text. Uh, then after the second time we met, former Padres pitcher Jacob Nix told her, you got to get this bag. I'll give you 50,000, Lindsay replied. Her AA sponsor asked her at one point, do you feel a tiny bit guilty? Not really, she replied. Since then, her legal team has approached me multiple times about coming to a financial settlement. But as I have done since day one, I refuse to pay her even a single cent. Uh, in August of 2021, Lindsay Hill's claims were heard in court. It's a wise move on his part because you pay off this one, he's gonna be paying tons of women. He'll be paying tons of women, and it, it'll read as he settled, and the the PR is disastrous. So, yeah. And during those legal proceedings, critical information was deliberately and unlawfully concealed from me and my legal team. Uh, information like this video, which was taken by Lindsay Hill herself the morning after she claimed she was brutally attacked emotionally traumatized and desperate to get away from me. Uh, and now we have the metadata, so there can be no dispute. Uh, it was taken mere minutes before she left my house on the morning of May 16th, 2021, without my knowledge or consent, of course. Look at that yeah, evil smirk of hers, of like she knows what's, ha what's gonna happen next. Such an evil smirk. Uh, in it, you can see her lying in bed next to me while I'm sleeping, smirking at the camera without a care in the world or any marks on her face. I think it paints a pretty clear picture of what actually happened the evening of May 15th and why the video was originally concealed from us. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, after hearing the evidence available to her, Judge Diana Gold Saltman found that Lindsay Hill had misled the court. She found her claims to be materially misleading. Uh, she denied her request for a domestic violence restraining order, and she found that no sexual assault or non-consensual conduct took place. Now, some of you might not know about restraining order hearings. I know I didn't, but uh, I've since learned that uh, it's extremely rare for a request for a restraining order to be denied because the standard of proof that you need to obtain one is extremely low. So yeah. you can think of that what you will. Yeah. The fact is, because was... you have to think about it, like 
like what is the downside? Like, let's make sure, as I mentioned yesterday, I think it was yesterday on Locals. I don't remember. I, days are starting to run together on me now. But or maybe it was when I, it was, no, I think it was two days ago when I was explaining Judge Rosado and I told over that story with the nursing home application I made to, to stop it. Judges are terrified, terrified of issuing a decision which is going to result in someone being physically harmed. So that's why he's completely correct in what he's saying here. Put yourself in the shoes of the judge. If there's any thought that there's legitimacy to the claim, you're going to grant it because, okay, what's the downside? This guy has to stay 500 yards away from you? Who cares? So why would you just not grant it, like almost rubber stamp it? Someone comes in and claim, all right, boom, 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 boom. Keep you safe. I don't have to worry about it. If I reject it, then I'm the one who's on the hook. If God forbid this guy is actually a lunatic and he does something to cause you physical harm. So that's why the the, the it's really thin. <laughs> yeah, the, what you need to establish is really in most jurisdictions, I can't speak to every jurisdiction, and frankly, I never dealt with it myself. But from what I've read, it's it's pretty it's pretty low bar, and she couldn't reach that bar. That's pretty that's a pretty sad statement about what the judge thought about her claims. I was never arrested. I was never charged with a crime, and I won the only legal proceeding that took place without my side of the story even being heard. Uh, and most importantly, as I've said from day one, I never sexually assaulted Lindsay Hill or anyone else for that matter. Uh, so I sued her, which prompted her to counter sue me. Quite frankly, regardless of the outcome in court, I've paid significantly more in legal fees than Lindsay Hill could ever pay me I'm in sure. my entire life. I'm sure. Now, this is a guy. So so sometimes some people just have the phrase is F you money. <laughs> and this is the classic example of where someone with F you money is very motivated to use their money as it's labeled, where it's like, no, I'm coming for you. This is personal now. I don't care what they pay. By the way, that's a lawyer's that's a lawyer's fantasy. <laughs> a deep pocket who's got who's, who's got fu money and is and is looking to say fu to someone. Oh my god. You start with the initial retainer and it's just like through the roof. Through the roof. Here's the thing, when I've had a couple of situations like this where someone comes in and they're all very, very hot and bothered about a situation. And I know that through the course of time, what happens is they have this emotion that's very, very high right now. And they're like, I don't care about the cost. I don't care about the cost. I don't care about the cost. Invariably, the wisest move of your attorney, at that's the point where you quote them some ridiculous figure as an initial retainer. There's several reasons for this. Number one is it is almost impossible they'll be as angry the next time you need to send them a bill. As time passes, they are less angry. And since the cost of litigation is very difficult to predict because you don't know what motions are going to come up, you don't know what briefs are going to come up, all of a sudden emergency motion or this thing, or you have to respond to a motion, and then you got to keep, you know, hit your client for bill. And like, oh my gosh, I didn't know what this is going to cost. So you sort of want to shock them with the sticker value, saying, you really want to do this? You really want to do this? Because I don't know if you're going to win, and I don't know if there's any money there, and I don't know if this is going to pay out for you. And you give them all the downsides, all the downsides, you get that out of the way, you put that preferably, you know, make reference to that in the retainer or at least in a follow-up email as a CUA, CYA. So, so you sort of, you know, let them know there's no promises here of any sort of recovery and that, and even perhaps express your, your, your expectation that this is going to be a financially losing venture for them. And they're all happy to, and, you know, please, you know, countersign and acknowledge that you've read through this and you understand all of these things that we're laying out here. So you have the sticker, the, the, the sticker shock value, the sticker value shock, which you're basically trying to scare them out of it. That's something that's healthy. And the other thing is then when the bills come up, come up down the road, you know, you have a lot thicker retainer to, to eat from. And if they decide to, you know, and, and you're covered and you're covered. So yeah, that's, that's the, I'm sure I'd be surprised if his initial thing wasn't for for you know well into six figures for his initial his his initial retainer. Uh, and I knew that would be the case going in, but the lawsuit was never about the money for me. It was the only way for me to obtain critical information to clear my name. 
uh, the discovery process in that lawsuit recently concluded, at which point uh, Lindsay Hill's legal team again came to us with another proposal to resolve the case. Uh, this time, however, <coughs> they weren't seeking any money from me. Having received uh, much of the information that had been hidden from us, uh, a small portion of which I've referenced here, um, I was willing to agree to the terms proposed. Both parties would drop their respective lawsuits and neither of us would pay either side any money. Um, I also retained my right to speak publicly about the case, something I have not been at liberty to do since June of 2021. So after <laughs> today, both lawsuits have been settled. Now, over the last two years, I've been forced to defend my integrity uh, and my reputation in a very public setting. But hopefully this is the last time I have to do so, as I'd prefer to just remain focused on doing my job, uh, winning baseball games and entertaining fans around the world. So today, I'm happy to be moving on with my life. So there you go. That was... When was that? Six months ago? <coughs> that was the first claim against him. That was the first claim against him. Now he's gotten retro now now he's 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 gotten his um day of reckoning, so to speak, but the second one in even more pronounced ways, as we're about to see. Is he? I didn't know that. Woohoo! Oh, it did! I'm so glad! Oh, I'm so glad. I'm going to give you one of these. Yes, your signature hat arrived today. It's a party hat, love. We love it. Thank you now. And thank you. Now I have your sig my signature in, in Puff Pen. You do. You do. And very few have it in Puff Pen. <laughs> very, very few. There's like five or six people out there who have it in Puff Pen. So I've never had to sign. It's really hard to sign in Puff Pen, but uh, especially on like you know a bill of a cap or something. But yeah, I'm glad it came. I'm so I'm so relieved. See, I sent it out. I told you all I sent it out. Thank God. Well, Stella got hers, uh, and I still have to get out Janelle's. I haven't sent Janelle's out yet, but and Pam got hers, and I'm still waiting to see Worcestershire. She hers was going to take a while to get out to her. I mean it. Mailed out the same day, but she she was far away. And uh, and then you had uh, what you call called? Um, I'm here, Pam. Anyhow, um, and obviously Viola Prime. I'm still waiting to see if she got hers. Viola, post a few links in locals to one A orgs. I just tagged you if you didn't see it. Thank you. Thank you. I will. I'll try to check it out. I'll try to check it out tomorrow. By the way, I did not go down to the courthouse today because I was like, I don't know if we're going to get in there. And this is, at this point, it's the jury. Jury selection is much less interesting to me than actual testimony. So I did not go down to Trump's trial. And I was like, I'd rather suspend the day trying to see if I can help garner some, some recognition from some attorney out there who can actually help me. So there you go. I was in spaces and doing stuff like that all day. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything over here. We're good over here. We're good over here in the ghetto. Let me peek in the ghetto. We're good in the ghetto. All right. And check locals while I'm here. While I'm doing my wild thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything groove. All right. Well, here's Trevor Bauer now. An Arizona woman who accused former Major League pitcher Trevor Bauer of, of SA has been charged with defrauding the baseball player. This was reported yesterday. Uh-oh. An indictment unsealed Monday. Maricopa County Superior Court charges the woman with fraud and theft by extortion, both felonies, but doesn't provide specific details about the alleged crimes. It says Bauer and one other person were defrauded in a scheme that potentially spanned several years. The AP does not typically identify people who say they have been victims of SA unless they come forward publicly. The woman sued, so I'll tell you who she is. <laughs> this woman here, Darcy... Uh... Semanu or something like that is the woman's name. Uh, the woman sued Bauer in December 2022, accusing him of the R word. 
two years earlier that she said resulted in pregnancy in late 2020. Court records on Tuesday afternoon didn't list an attorney for the woman in the fraud case, and the lawyer representing her in the lawsuit didn't immediately respond to a phone message seeking additional comment. Bauer was never arrested or charged, counted to saying he had one consensual encounter with the woman in 2020 and then accused her of faking the pregnancy to extort money from him. His attorneys have said the woman made several million-dollar demands against him. Bauer said he ultimately paid $8,761 for expenses he believed to be related to the woman's reported pregnancy and its subsequent termination. The woman later said that she ultimately decided not to terminate the pregnancy but had a miscarriage. She's scheduled to be arraigned on criminal charges next Friday. In a recorded video statement Tuesday, Barris said he's innocent. Let's go check out. Let's let's check out his statement. One of the women who accused me of sexual assault just got indicted for committing felony fraud against me. Imagine that. Now, let me catch up to speed. In the last three years, two women have taken legal action against me. Uh, Lindsay Hill started all this, you may remember her from this video, as the girl who set me up and lied to the world in an attempt to take my money. Well, today, the only other one, Darcy Adana Asimonu, has been criminally indicted for committing felony fraud against me and another man. So now she's facing up to 16 years in prison. Her claims are even more absurd than Lindsay's were, so here's some of the details. We had one... <laughs> He's like, I am dropping everything on the public. You're all going to hear it all. You're all going to hear it all plain sexual encounter in December of 2020. Nothing that could be considered remotely rough. Uh, she initiated it, but don't take my word for it. Take hers. This is a picture and text message she sent me the next morning explaining why she came on to me. And from I guess you smell cocky and confident with slight stubble. Hmm. I did make that comment that your shoulders look broad and are strong. My feminine... Four months afterwards, she repeatedly requested to sleep with me again. Uh, for example, this text from January 7th. I'm not certain, but can I sleep over there later? I'm not certain if, but can I sleep there? It's peaceful for me. 2021. At one point, she even requested a sample of my sperm so she could have my child whenever she wanted to in the future. <laughs> All right, guys. Guys, if anyone ever asks you for a sample and they're not your medical, your licensed medical professional, Strongly advise against. Strongly advise. Against. It's not. It's not a good plan. It's just not a good plan. If they're a medical professional, then they might ask for various types of specimens, and you got to do what you feel is best. You know, given your situation in the given instance. But uh, just some random chick who you hook up with, asking for a sample. Yeah. How? Who? Who gave her? Who would do that? I don't who do guys do that? Now it's hard to keep track, but she's made at least four seven-figure demands over the last few years. Uh, more than a year after the one time we slept together, and only after Lindsay Hill made up her false allegations, Adonna retained a lawyer. Uh, she then demanded $3.6 million and claimed I forced her to have an abortion, leaving her emotionally devastated and irretrievably damaged by it. <laughs> uh because once they smell you see and this is why i had the same thing like like i don't know the situation with um that football deshaun deshaun watson i'm just like i don't know if it's like they're like you know women just smell blood and they're like okay i'm not alone here a whole bunch of people are coming out i can make claims too I, I, the re, and I, look, I don't know that he's innocent. Definitely don't know that of anything that of any of the claims that Deshaun Watson faced. He's a uh, he's a quarterback on the Browns. He used to be on the Houston Texans, but um, I'm simply saying I they couldn't get an indictment on him in two different counties, and this, you can indict a ham sandwich. So. Is it because he was popular in Texas? And he was. He was a superstar when he was in Houston. Is that why? It's possible. Definitely possible. Or it could be they just didn't have much evidence. That's also possible. I don't know. There's that, there's that comedic writer for SI who like hates on him. Just assumes that all these women are always telling the truth. Always telling the truth. And basically talking about how foul it was that the Browns gave him a contract. And I was just like, how do you know? 
Like, I don't know. I don't know. But what Trevor, the reason I bring this up in this context, because Trevor Bauer is making the point here that this woman came out after she saw another woman come out. So it's almost like, you know, there's strength in numbers here. So if if one woman's coming out making these claims against him, so now the society is looking at him like he's a predator. So my claims are going to have more credibility. And that's definitely the way people, someone who's inclined towards falsifying something like this would likely think, right? That he's a better potential victim and that her credibility will get a boost just given the fact that this guy is labeled by society to be a predator already. But uh, here's the thing. She never had an abortion because she was never even pregnant. And that's corroborated by her own medical records. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. That's not good. When I refused to pay her the $3.6 million she was asking for, she made up a bogus sexual assault claim and filed a civil suit against me. In that version of her story, she claimed for the first time, by the way, uh, that there was non-consensual sex. But her texts from the next morning show what actually happened. Remember this text in which she explains why she came on to me? She also claims that instead of an abortion, she actually had a miscarriage. But that's impossible, of course, because, again, she was never even pregnant. Uh, we now have emails between her and the first two law firms that dropped her in which they acknowledge they never had any evidence. To confirm without proof of the abortion, or even the day of the abortion, we cannot continue to represent you. We urge you to consult with other attorneys who may have different standards. <laughs> find some, find Saul. You better call Saul. You better call Saul because we ain't taking you. To support her claims, but they'll try to get my money anyway. I appreciate your time and input today. I'm glad we can agree to 750 to 3.6 million as a settlement bracket. As explained on the phone, we will start high and understand the lowest you'll accept is 750. Wow. Wow. Just goes to show when they throw out numbers at you how, look at how broad that range is. I then shared an audio recording I have in which Adana contradicts her own claims and asks me for money. In the emails, her lawyers agreed that that's. Hi, Adana, as your legal counsel, we have all agreed that the recording is detrimental to your case to the point that we will very likely not be able to continue representation of you on this matter. We're, rec we're requesting a copy of the recording to verify the authenticity. I know this is difficult news, but without the medical records of your abortion and a recording like this, this is what we feel is insurmountable. Hugs. <laughs> Hugs. <laughs> Amy. Hugs. I'm trying to think if there's any scenario where I would close out a letter with hugs. No. 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 Her legal counsel is sending her hugs, though. Hugs. <laughs> I will tell you that there was a phase that I went through. <clears throat> there was a phase I went to. You talk about closing out letters. There's a, there's a, a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A musical called 1776. Great musical. And this is the environment I grew up in as a kid. Don't blame me. Okay. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. That's how my parents figured they could like teach me history. They're both history teachers. So they figured that's how they could teach me history is by watching a musical about over and over and over again and over again. And we had a record. But in this in the musical, so every once in a while, Congress gets a letter from George Washington, usually complaining about the tattered state of the um, Constitutional Army. And he would sign every letter with your obedient G Washington. And I was like, wow, that is such a great closing. I mean, this is freaking George Washington. Sometimes you're obedient. I don't remember your obedient servant. It's G Washington. What a, what a class act. Your obedient servant, your obedient G Washington. Such a ridiculously class act. I assume that that's accurate, that that's actually how he signed his letters to Congress. And perhaps he didn't sign his letters to everyone that way. But I was like, that is such a great way to sign a letter. That is such a great closing. You're obedient, Joe Nierman. 
I think it's a great way. To, I think it's it's definitely better than hugs. It's definitely more professional than hugs. <laughs> way more professional than hugs. Hugs. <laughs> hey, we're basically done with you. Because we think you're full of crap and you're a big fat liar when you basically came to us with your completely, obviously bogus claims. So we're out of here and yeah, find someone else. Hugs. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is such a great letter. I don't know how many people pause this video just to read this stuff, but this to me is like, the best part. Insurmountable evidence, and they inform Madonna that they can no longer represent her unless she can provide documentation or proof of her claims. And of course, she couldn't do that, so the law firm urged her to consult other law firms with different standards. Now, Madonna has filed more than 10 police reports claiming sexual assault or harassment against other men, including at least one other professional athlete. But after the Scottsdale police completed their investigation into her claim against me. You gotta wonder how she has a PTSD from all those attacks she suffered. You gotta wonder, all those different attacks she suffered, 10 different times? 10 different times? Oh my gosh, what a rough life. This poor girl, she can't meet a man who isn't like gonna like, you know, just like be like devastating her. It's terrible, terrible, awful. <laughs> 10 times, 10 times? Me, she's the one being indicted for felony fraud. And not just against me, against another man as well. Uh, she made up bogus sexual assault claims and attempted to extort him too. That gets worse. In my lawsuit against her, we subpoenaed a witness whom she knew for relevant documents to use in our case. And when she found out, she immediately made sexual assault claims against him too. Uh, her MO is clear. Lie to men to get their money, extort them if she must, and when they refuse to pay, stop paying or stop giving her what she wants, go to the police, accuse them of sexual assault, and file a civil suit against them to retaliate. And just so no one can say, well, he still has two other accusers, just because the first two are complete frauds doesn't mean the others are. Here's a couple of facts about them. They both had lawyers first demand in excess of $3 million to not go public. Uh, in both cases, only after I refused to pay any sum of money did the lawyers make anonymous claims in the media. They both had the opportunity to file a criminal complaint against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to file a civil suit against me. Neither of them did. They both had the opportunity to participate in Lindsay Hill's civil suit against me. They could have even done so anonymously. They both refused. One of them even submitted a statement to the court stating that she never made public accusations against me. The other refused to participate so vehemently that Lindsay Hill took legal action against her trying to force her to participate. She you see, you see, in numbers, in strength, there's, in numbers, there's strength. That's what this is. If we all make claims against him, he gets tarred as a predator. And yeah, and to me, he's got a high degree of credibility at this point. Still refused. So they both had the opportunity to testify under penalty of perjury. Neither of them did. One can only wonder why. Uh, perhaps it's because all of their claims against me are lies. Now, it's been two years since these women and their lawyers attempted to weaponize anonymous claims in the media against me to take my money. I addressed them at the time, and as far as I'm concerned, it's in the past. But if there comes a time in the future where I need to defend myself further, I will not hesitate to do so. Uh, for now, there's no reason to speak further on this topic, though, because outside of Adana, who's now been indicted with felony fraud, there are no claims against me, no ongoing investigations, and no outstanding lawsuits. At this point, I'm not sure what else I can possibly do to prove my innocence in all this. I did not do what I was accused of. And every institution that our society is entrusted to rule on issues like these, like courts, judges, law enforcement officers, prosecutors, they all agree with me. They've rejected every single claim made against me, even going as far as charging one of my accusers with a felony. If any evidence of any of these claims actually existed, I would have been charged or at the very least arrested, but that never happened. What else do I have to do to prove that this entire situation has been a massive lie? This is insane. At what point do I get to go back to work and continue earning a living? Very powerful stuff. I was recently invited to pitch I told you, he likes to talk to social media. <laughs> he likes to talk to social media. He's got a lot of fans. And like I told you, I was a fan of his. 737,000 subs. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so...
the whole Me Too movement. This might be a little bit of a hot take, what I'm about to say here. I don't think it's going to get somebody mad. <laughs> I don't think everything about the Me Too movement conceptually was a bad thing. Because I do think that it emboldened women who felt forced into silence to actually come forward and and name men who had done wrong to them. And those people should be exposed. So, you know, I don't I don't want I think people hear the phrase hashtag me too, and we've seen so many of these Adana's type of claim or this Hill woman type of claim that we're just sort of or the you know the Amber Heard situation and those are the those become the ones we remember because they're so glaring and because you know for a number of reasons i think that we can identify with people who are accused falsely and concepts that many of us especially those on the us on the right side of the aisle tend to continually remember innocent until proven guilty and which I think is completely lost on the left at this stage. So I sort of I sort of feel as if Me Too conceptually did provide strength in numbers that was likely necessary. You can't deny this. Let's put it this way. You can I don't think anyone can reasonably deny that they're likely, they're likely was at least one woman. One woman in the world who felt, who had been, who had remained, who actually was a victim, had remained silent and came forward because she felt the strength in numbers that was provided by hashtag me too. And she's a victim, no, no less than anyone else. And her ability to cleanse her her emotion and 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 potentially seek justice against that wrong person, whoever that woman is. I'm sure it's a lot more than one. I'm sure it's, it's almost certainly a lot more than one. But I, I think it's a, I think it's unreasonable to say there wasn't at least one. And that's at least one person who was unburdened because of the the Me Too movement. And that's why I say conceptually. There are potential, there are positives to be acknowledged. In practice, unfortunately, as the left is wont to do, they come up with anything that's remotely in any sort of way a good idea, they have to completely bespoil it and make it foul and terrible and awful and and just stupid with idiocy like believe all women which is basically like saying all rain is good like I believe all anything it doesn't make any sense and everyone knew as soon as people were saying that how stupid that was and when people are so involved in a movement that they, they think that there's, there's good behind it that they that they're gonna basically um do whatever they can to promote it, even by using ridiculous logic and lying and pretending that, no, this is the, the right way to do it. And they justify that, you know, the ends justify the means and whatever it is, it's so self-destructive. They think that they're making this stronger when all they did was they took the Me Too movement and decimated it because invariably there are going to be Adonis out there. There are going to be Amber Hills. There are going to be Amber Herds out there. There are going to be these people who see an opportunity and take advantage of it. It doesn't matter what gender they are. It doesn't matter anything. There are always people who are going to see something and see how can I use this to my advantage and integrity be damned. 
And to just pretend that that was not an inevitable outcome, that there would be Trevor Bowers of the world or Johnny Depp's of the world who would suffer because of the stupidity and the, and the completely, obviously, foreseeably disastrous approach of believe all women foretold its inevitable failure and being a disastrous thing for society altogether. So, like I said, conceptually, Me Too could have been a good thing if it would have been handled with a far more healthy approach of a rec recognition that just because we want to strengthen women who are in terrible situations to come out and publicize and not be afraid of the repercussions when they tell the truth, that there should, that there should have been recognition that, hey, and they, what, the reason why they want to say believe all women is because they said all these women out there who have been abused, and it's not just women, by the way, men get, get abused also, tons of men, tons of men, tons of men. And for them, it's psychologically, in certain ways, certain ways far more emasculating to them and for, far more humiliating. But I guess that traditionally, usually men are the breadwinners, even though it's not really true anymore, obviously. But and the thought that all these women are trapped in these situations that are dangerous and psychologically, physically, and emotionally damaging to them for potentially decades. I think that that the efforts to try and encourage them and, and get them out of their shell, that they're going to be afraid that they're not going to be believed. And if they're not believed, then they're going to be in a worse situation than they were before they started and all this other stuff. So that's why we're going to say, believe all women. That's where I'm going to promote this. Terribly, terribly short-sighted, stupid was the death now. The moment that the phrase believe all women was, was coined is the day me to basically put an expiry date on itself. Because this sort of scenario here that we just saw with Trevor Bauer was inevitable and its exposure that, that there are these grifters out there was equally inevitable. And think of how many people were wrongly had their lives destroyed. This guy here, Trevor Bauer. I mean, chased out of baseball. Now, like I said, he's a hothead and a bit of a he's if you if you watch his background. He's a little bit of an unusual dude. He comes he comes across very well here. Is this there's a lot to sympathize with him here at this moment to feel vindication on his behalf, obviously, because you know, he's to, to, to from to my mind, like I could be wrong, but I believe the dude completely. I believe him completely. I could be wrong. But he's he's managed when you when you got four claims against you and two of them are going by the wayfair, and he's saying the same thing about all four of them with such utter confidence that no one's ever going to come forward against him. I think that he became someone who, that these women said, he's labeled a predator, there's strength in numbers, we're going to try and see what we can soak out of him. And each of them learned one by one that he's not a guy who was willing to be trifled with and was far happier to burn twice as much money on attorneys as he was on paying off some false claim. That's how I read this situation. Like I said, I'm, in, I'm not infallible. I could be mistaken. That's how I read this situation. Now, I think that <clears throat> this is a very heavy blow to the whole Me Too thing. I don't know if it's quite as heavy as Amber Heard being exposed the way she was. But, I mean, the fact that she's being charged, this is the first woman, as far as we, you know, that, as far as we know, who's being publicly charged for a false Me Too claim. That makes this significant. And it puts women on notice that you think that, you know, this is a win-no-lose situation. Well, newsflash for you, you can end up behind bars if you're, if you're patently full of garbage. Now, I want to be clear. The reason that, that Adana is facing these criminal charges, in case, you know, you're a man or woman who is, who is you know, dealing with your own personal situation, so my first, my first hope for you, uh, prayers for you, first and foremost, is no one should think like, oh, if I, if I, unless I can prove it, document it, I'm gonna have some sort of, I'm, I could potentially go to jail for making the claim. That's garbage. That's not true. 
The same way Amber Heard was not exposed by Johnny Depp. She was exposed by herself. She was not exposed because she had a lack of evidence. She was exposed because there was so much evidence against what she was saying that nothing she said was credible. So my encouragement to those of you who might find yourself, unfortunately, in some sort of terrible situation in, <coughs> is that if you have concerns that I'm not going to be believed or whatever, I don't have evidence, I can't prove it, whatever, with lack of evidence, does that hurt your potential, your potential ability to con convince people that you're telling the truth? That's reality. It is reality. Obviously, the more evidence to document whatever claims someone has is always going to be, you know, physical evidence is always going to be beneficial. That's just reality. I'm not going to try and kid any of you about what reality is. But as far as facing an Amber Heard type of situation or that type of embarrassment or in a, whatever this woman's name is, Adana, whatever her name is, where she's facing criminal charges, it's because there's so much evidence that it exposes that she's full of crap, like a, fall, like a, a negative pregnancy test or text messages that are being sent, that are sent the next day when she supposedly was brutally assaulted. And the text messages are revealing quite the contrary type of attitude. So one would assume that if you are a legitimate victim of someone that you wouldn't there wouldn't be evidence like that against you and that's why i'm saying don't let this story this situation here frighten you from coming forward but anyway i just i wanted to share those thoughts because I, I do recognize that you know domestic abuse is a very serious thing i would never make light of that i would make light of someone who's been exposed as being a lying grifter but someone who's genuinely in that situation i hope they find the strength to extricate themselves from that and to come forward and to expose these people to the public scorn that they they merit but you want to engage in false claims like like these women do that's a different type of abuse it really is someone who's who's dropping false me too claims it's a different, you know, there's all sorts of different forms of abuse. That's an abuse. This guy has suffered abuse. He has. He suffered abuse. I mean, he was living the life, living the life of freaking our sport, our sports superstars are our American royalty. And this guy's in Japan now, despite, you know, you know, pitching on a world championship team. I think he was in, I think that he, he pitched in the all star game. I mean, this guy was was living the life, and now he's in Japan. So, yeah, and, he, and and that that's only the tip of the iceberg of the emotional abuse that that he sustained from the world, courtesy of these lying grifters. So, I'm glad to see that woman get her comeuppance, because liars and and. And people who don't care about the damage they inflict on others, whether it's physical abuse or someone who's an abusive individual or it's emotional abuse, like these women were dropping on him. That's a good day. It's a good day when there's vindication like that. That's the Trevor Bauer story. Tim Pool was desperately looking for a guest last night. You should have went on. You know what? What am I supposed to do? I, I, you see, I, 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 I would have loved to have gone on. What, should, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to like, like put out an email? Like, Tim, call me. Tim, call me. Please call me, Timmy. Tim, please call me. I don't. I, what am I supposed to do? It's not like I'm. I'm hiding here. You know, I don't. I don't know what to do. When the Ghislaine Maxwell, when I was covering Ghislaine Maxwell, I actually threw out a couple of tweets at him. I was like, don't you want someone to come? You're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell all the time. Don't you want a lawyer who's been sitting in the courtroom watching this trial? And I actually had a couple people drop back at me like, you know, Joe, why don't you like beg harder or something like that? And I was like, yeah, you know, what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So, no. If he invites me on, I'd be happy to go. Megan Kelly wants to have me on, I'd be happy to go. Anyone who wants to have me on. This guy, you know, James Pirate Radio, his social media size is 
It's probably smaller than mine. I don't care. That's not what it's about. If it's someone who's a good person and wants to give it, you know, wants to have me on, I'm happy to go. And if they can add to my exposure, obviously, you know, I, I, I have to consider that as well, especially in the current scenario where I'm trying to get more recognition about this this thing I find myself entangled in, which I need help. So the more recognition I can get, the better. Look, you want to know how you, you want to know how you can tell that I'm I'm genuinely looking for someone to step in here. You ever see me put out a video before? You ever see me promote the same thing over and over again on X before? I literally created a video. Spent all day yesterday creating a video just so it would be something for people to sort of latch on to to understand the story. Then today, when I try, when I saw that after I put that video up on YouTube. And I, and I actually DM different people who have a little bit of clout on X and I have them in my, you know, I'm able to get them on DM because I'm they're following me as well. That I, you know, I reached out to them and I think it was Redhead Libertarian who was like, hey, sending this out is not going to work. You need to actually embed a video. So I spent I spent an two hours putting together that video, that three minute video there that you saw and editing it and trying to like, whatever. I didn't even like it when I, when it came out, I ended up trimming out 10 seconds. I like it much better in this current form now, but the point is I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So I don't know. I should have went on. Yeah, I should have. He should have called me. He, he should have texted me. It's not hard for them to find me. Cassandra knows where to find me. Oh, you do. Cool. Awesome. Kimmy. Watch you before get cock off and young. <laughs> get cock off and young. Became a fan after that. That's funny. That's funny. What's that guy's name? Baruch. Baruch, right? Isaac Baruch. That was great. Get cock off and young. A good cult leader signs everything with hugs. Buying a new tracksuit tomorrow. What color do I need to buy? I've thought about the whole color of the tracksuit thing. There really needs to be one color. It has to be one color. I've thought about this a lot. I've thought about this a lot. I've thought of the hunter green, a la like, you know, squid game type of color. I've thought of that. Then I realized we would all look like we're in squid game. <laughs> so I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I thought, about, I don't know why I keep coming back to Brown. Um, maybe because diggers. So I kept coming back to that. But then I was like, no one's ever going to want to wear that. <laughs> A brown tracksuit. Who the heck would ever want to wear a brown tracksuit? That's not that's not gonna sell. That's not gonna sell. That's like a real deep commitment. I'm gonna have to like Svengali a whole bunch of folk to get them to buy a brown tracksuit. Who the heck wants to wear a brown tracksuit? I'm open to suggestions. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back to the Hunter Green and say, oh heck with it. Just squid game it. Bauer's career will never get those two years back, and now he's getting old. I'm waiting for a suit against MLB. That I want to see that too. I want to see that too. Is there a motion I can start researching, start an outline? Might find boilerplate to guide me. What about discovery that witnesses have actually said they're afraid of? They claim they did, but that would not be relevant because the question is whether the judge did the right thing. So whatever he did, so just to try and prove that his findings of fact were wrong. So it's a matter of whether his process was right, much more than whether his conclusions were right. Whether his process enabled him to reach the result rather than whether the result was the accurate result. So that's why, it's a good question you're asking, Atrigi. Um, but that's why, you know, whether, that's my, that's my take on it. Someone might, Disagree with me on that, but that's my take on it. That this is all an assessment. It's a criticism of Judge Merchant's process, much more than his conclusion that this that this justifies. To basically say it's not a reasonable conclusion to have, <clears throat> or reasonable steps to take to come to that conclusion. Um, if I had a boilerplate, I I don't even know. As I was explaining to James Pirate Radio. I seriously don't even know whether or not I qualify. I spent an hour yesterday. You heard me if you follow me on Locals. But I was like, I don't even know if I qualify as of right or not. I think after, if I lose here on May 6th and I get a decision against me, I do think I can go there as of right. I still would ask for permission because I know that if you get permission from the court to appeal, 
that you um that you should that it enables you to actually go there as of right which is something i didn't know before i started researching that i don't know if i asked that in my oral argument or not like expect to lose and say hey if i lose please give me an opportunity or whether i ask them after i lose i don't know what's at what stage i would ask that because i've never even thought about going to the court of appeals before and now it seems like it's inevitable that i'm going to be making an application to get there at some point Blackstone's principle would deem Me Too an utter failure and massive injustice. Yeah, it was a failure. Like any issue inside when brought to light, which needs to be done, the same sinister motivations will take advantage of it. That's for sure. There are men who are speaking out as well. They don't get the media coverage women do most of the time. That's, I mentioned, that's why I mentioned them. Yes, it was a great cast. There's Jeff, what's his name? Jeff uh, Daniels. Daniels. He ended up being on. Uh, some medical drama thing saying elsewhere um and the guy who played ben franklin was great even the guy who played richard henry lee a bullying guy my name is richard henry lee virginia is my home there's a mistake there's a there's a, a mistake in that song because i in 1776 your first i think um lightfoot is Henry Lee, Bobby Lee, Richard Lightfoot. And um, he wasn't called Lightfoot until like 15 years later, I think. <laughs> Mega Bobby says, praying for Israel in the Western world tonight that cool heads prevail. The fire has been stoked again in the Middle East. People mentioned that earlier. And I pray with you. I pray with you, my brother. Griff, Tim is sponsoring Camelot's race car. Is he really? They have a direct line of communication. Get Cody to put you in contact. Tim respects those who fight. What am I supposed to do? Seriously, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what I should do. I don't know why it is. I don't know why I can't get anywhere there. is from second. I'm confused. That's not what I'm looking for. Oh, this is too nice. Miss Ignomy hit me with the five. Maybe one of those. I apologize. I missed. I, I, I tried scrolling up. I, I don't know why I, I couldn't find the people who were gifted. If you were gifted by Miss Ignomy, kindly express your gratitude for becoming part of the, the world's greatest, not at all a cult type of cult. Arguably one of history's greatest, not at all a cult type of cults. So, and there you go. There you go. You're now in the following. You're now in the following. You're in the following. The following, as I said, is not at all a cult type of cult. There's no spacesuits, no tracksuits, no self harm, no harming others, no stabbing yourself with the jabby jab, no squirrel mutilations, no goat sacrifices, no throwing virgins into volcanoes, no dancing around fires while shedding your clothing while someone beats on the tom toms with a whole steady. No witchcraft, no, no Kool Aid. Mild farming and certainly no leeches. So, welcome to the following. Joe, do be open with this case? God is on your side. God being on my, I agree with you, God's on my side. That doesn't mean I'm going to win. I vote white with blue fringe tracksuits. <laughs> <laughs> White with blue fringe. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's pretty funny. Debbie Brown? No, Navy looks good on everyone. It's universal. That's not bad. 
That's not bad. I always like Navy. Navy is pretty good. Pretty good call. The reason I, I, I always come back to green, though, the reason I come I come back to Hunter Green, and that's because I, I know I look good in green. Rob Price, new member, welcome to the following. Rob Price, welcome aboard, my brother. Periwinkle Blue. It's terribly parched. Periwinkle Blue. It's terribly parched. Periwinkle Blue. <laughs> Now we're buying you a trailer. I vote for an old school Adidas tracksuit. You think? You think? For a boost tag Elon with the 1A post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I got to do. He's going to totally see it. He'll totally see it. Master Phillips hitting me with 25. With, uh, with, with five good logic memberships. Where am I at here? Where am I at here? Where are you at? This one I'm going to try and get. The five from Master Phillips were Rat Tech, Nerding Out, Digital Soldier, Mos Mosam, and Doe Deer. All of you owing tremendous gratitude to Master Phillips. And of course, of course, Bella Stella. Hit with the 10. Hit with the 10. Hit with the 10. 10 new members of the following. Following is not at all a cult type of cult. And I need to share that information with Ammo is Currency, Joe, Jace Clark, Delon Thompson, Streaky, Jules, Naomi Boyd, Stumpy Stew 2, Changeling, Greenlight Courier Service, all of you, welcome to the following. Please always bear in mind, I am not the leader of the following. I am not, not the leader. I'm going to say it twice so it's very clear. I am not, not the leader of the following. I hope that was crystal clear. I'm just a host. Just a host. Andrea, Viva has been on Tim Pool a few times. I know that. Don't you think I know that? Phil Holloway has been with Megan Kelly over and over again. I don't understand this. I don't understand any of this. What am I supposed to understand? How, am I, how can anyone interpret any of this? I, I literally say it's a it's like a miracle of God, okay? It's a miracle of God. Phil Holloway comes out of nowhere and he's like you know, best buddies with with Megan Kelly. Viva Fry is on Tim Pool. Ron Coleman is on with Tim Pool all the time. I, I I can't explain any of this. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like okay, look, you know what? This clearly has to be. This is what God wants for me. This is what God wants. I'm just, so I go with it and I'm totally happy with it. Cause let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Thank God. My life is amazing. First and foremost, because I'm blessed to have a phenomenal wife, six wonderful kids and a following of people and diggers who are so amazingly supportive of me that I could not possibly be any happier. And here it is. I embroil myself in some sort of litigation that perhaps I can actually help make the world a better place. So I am tremendously happy. Do I wonder sometimes how it is that that happens? I think it's funny. I think at this point it's like, all right, <laughs> all right. I don't know. I don't know. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. All these people who have access to like all these different things. I don't. I don't. I also don't. There's something. There's definitely something. It's definitely. I have at a certain point. I have to be like, this. This. There's definitely something. It's definitely something. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I take it as a compliment. I'm like, maybe they're just intimidated by me. <laughs> they have too much personality. I don't know. I can't explain. I can't explain it at all. Uh, Viva, uh, thanks. Where do I mail the four? What? What? <laughs> I don't. I don't want your f no ew ew no ew ew oh no why would people ask a question like that and there's no squirrel there's no squirrel mutilations certainly no squirrel sacrifices why would someone sacrifice it's no goat sacrifices no squirrel mutilations you, you want to know what you guys squirrel sacrifice processing my god my God, they're letting anyone of the following these days. 
who is this guy? He's sending me, oh my God, dude. Seriously, my brother. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the following, Rabbit Stick. Welcome to the following, indeed. Dano hit me up with the Rumble Rant saying, I just filed the paperwork today. We are officially a cult. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I don't know what that means, what paperwork with whom you would follow, follow such a thing. But maybe maybe the ghetto, the the ghetto, the, the rumble ghetto is a is a different cult. I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I wanted to share with you because you all know that I'm embroiled in this whole thing here, trying to like, you know, get this gag removed. Apparently, not everyone agrees with that. Some people think that the gag is really great law. It's really good law, very, very solid law. So I I I think it's time for me to do some more research. I'm doing some more research just so I can, you know, feel confident in my knowledge of the law. And who better to enlighten me about gag law? Who better to enlighten me about, you know, grade A knowledge about gag law than, obviously, legal eagle. Here we go. Here we go. Let's go, legal. Teach us all gag law. Trump gagged harder featuring Liz Dye. Wait, we're calling this video what now? Yeah, that's very... He's such a great actor. He's about as good as Amber Heard here. Okay. I guess that's one way to put it. Yes, the first criminal trial of a foreign president in history is now underway. And, you know, you don't usually have to tell defendants not to go online and attack the judge's family. But in the case of Donald Trump, apparently you do. Yes, in his ongoing hush money trial in New York, Trump's response to a gag order barring him from attacking witnesses and jurors was to turn his rage against the daughter of Judge Juan Mershon. But will Trump be able to abide by the- His rage? Okay. Court's order. Here to tell us that he cannot is chaos lawyer Liz Dye. Thanks, Devin. Last week, New York Supreme Court Justice Juan Mershon imposed a gag order in Trump's New York criminal case. I will warn you that most of you, by the time we finish this, are going to think uh, that you wish you want, you, you basically want to give cause for like a Me Too claim by Liz Dye by the time this is over. I was watching this and I was like, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Bang, zoom. <laughs> to the moon, Liz. <laughs> That's the prosecution for 34 counts of filing false business records to hide the $130,000 payment to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Doesn't 34 charges for $130,000 sound really kind of crazy? 34 charges on 130000 Okay. In 2016, Trump's lawyer Michael Cohen fronted the cash and later billed Trump for legal work which was never performed during his first you don't know that you don't know that how do you know that that's what that's what a convicted perjurer told you we don't you don't know that at all Last year in office trump and his a convicted perjurer who makes money by saying awful things about donald trump so you're just sort of drawing conclusions here that you have no way of knowing are true Son Don Jr. signed monthly checks to pay those sham invoices. Trump. No, we should go after him too, probably. Tried mightily to wriggle out of this case, including an effort to get it transferred to federal. See, this whole thing, wriggle out of a case, you mean like defending it? Defending it? Like that's, that's, that's wriggle out? Like what do you, what do you think criminal defense attorneys, what do you think that they, they do? What, what, what do you think they do? What do you think defense attorneys in any area, in civil law, do? What do you think that they do? Try to wriggle out of it. Like, even that, like, desperately trying to paint as if that's, like, a nefarious thing. Try to wriggle out of it. <laughs> uh, Federal court, various claims of presidential immunity and accusing a prosecutor. Because, yeah, presidential immunity. Now, I don't know how well presidential immunity would apply in this scenario. Can we get to the gag? Years of misconduct. But now the court has said there will be no more postponements and set the trial to begin on April 15th. So, you know, one of those postponements was be because was when Alvin Bragg said we should give him 30 days and the judge said, we'll give him 20. So, yeah, wriggle out of it. Judge Marchand is totally, totally, totally um, 
sympathetic to, to Donald Trump. So unless he can find some new... Less sympathetic, apparently, than the district attorney, at least when it comes to timing of the trial. An interesting way to throw sand in the gears, the former president will face a jury this month. The New York case is the least dangerous of Trump's four pending criminal prosecutions. With when, you say, when she says least dangerous, she means that I'm not sure by what yardstick you're measuring that. I assume when she says least dangerous, she means as far as what criminal punishment he would be susceptible to upon conviction. It could mean that she means that the NYPD are going to do a more effective job of, of securing the premises. That could be another least dangerous. I'm not sure what she means by that, but we're going to, or maybe she means that this is the most precarious of all the claims because every legal expert has said that, which is, that would be the closest thing to the truth here. I'm not saying that. But I, I would agree that it's pretty, pretty weak claims, pretty stupid claims, which just makes the gag all the more infuriating. It's not, like I said, this is not even like he's, he's being charged with like Rico. This is like stupid charges and we're so desperate to get it, like, that it would never be brought against anyone else. And it's so important that he doesn't, that we, <laughs> that he doesn't have any, in, un, it's just like, anyone else just would have been pled out as like, all right, no charges. There wouldn't have been any charges because it because it's all federal thing. It's like, you know, it would have been like, we'll just release you on your own recognizance. I mean, this is, this is a jurisdiction where this was someone with, this is a jurisdiction where when they find bodies in a house, they, they release you on your own recognizance. And it's like, oh, we got to gag this one. Totally fair. Totally fair. <laughs> Not at all biased. With jail time unlikely, but it does have the advantage of bringing him face to face with people he absolutely loathes. And jail time unlikely. I don't agree with that if he was convicted. Maybe it's unlikely because I don't know how they would jail him and the Secret Service. I don't know how they would do that. That'd be a difficult thing to arrange. But... If you think that the judge in his sentencing is going to go leniently on him, I'm not sure what you've been watching. That's pretty weak analysis. Donald Trump's list of enemies is long and distinguished. He hates Hillary Clinton, of course. Who doesn't? <laughs> and Rosie O'Donnell. But he also Who doesn't? <laughs> also hates windmills. See, this is pretty stupid. And dogs and babies. <laughs> This is this is this is in-depth reporting. I, I think she really believed me that I love having a baby crying while I'm speaking. Now, yeah, he hates. But that's clear. That's evidence he hates babies. You guys are such a great source of information. Trump is about to be trapped in a room listening to testimony by Stormy Daniels, whom he's sued and been sued by after she broke her confidentiality agreement and told the world about their brief romantic encounter at a Lake Tahoe golf tournament in 2006. Trump despises Daniels and has attacked her on social Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? <laughs> if he paid her to remain silent and then she breached it, if that's true, why would he it's like it's like that like that that's a I don't understand anything that's happened. I don't understand social media for years. Aside from the political damage she inflicted on him, Daniels made derogatory comments about his manhood and claimed that she'd spanked him with a rolled up copy of Forbes magazine that had a picture of him with Ivanka and Don Jr. on the cover. And okay. Daniels isn't the only witness guaranteed to drive Trump wild. Oh yeah, drive him wild. Michael Cohen, who once swore he'd take a bullet for his former boss, has turned into Trump's arch nemesis. Cohen's testimony to Congress that Trump routinely false. How many times? Let's let's have an over under here, okay? Um, the over under is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. How many times she mentions Michael Cohen is a convicted perjurer? 0 0.5. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna make a poll here. You're all gonna lock in. Y'all gonna lock in, lock in, lock in.
refers to Michael Cohen as a convicted perjurer. That's not good. I'll change that. Zero point five. Okay. On Rumble, just so you, you guys feel loved. Over under, let's see. Zero under. <laughs> oh, they know. Negative one is <laughs> zero. <laughs> Negative one. There are different types of typing. I don't need to hear you all mocking my typing. They don't still make these keyboards, okay? It's an Amish keyboard. I have an Amish keyboard. Endux says no chance in hell. Power Cleric says zero. Any of you think over? Any of you? Anyone want to say yes? It's not pecking typing. It's like three, it's like four finger typing. All right. Well, I'll let that play out there and simmer a little bit. <laughs> Bella Stella, we love you, Joe. Thank you so much. You're awesome. They think it's great law until it affects them. Yeah, that's true. Kamala can teach better gag law than legal <laughs> I didn't even think of that one. In my in my uh in my little um I had a a poll that I put up here. Where's my poll? Where's my poll? Where are you? Where are you? My poll was uh, best chance to leave you a video on gag law being reliable is if it's about. Prior restraint on free speech, proper whoopee cushion placement, as in like, you know, gag, play a gag on someone, how deep your head should be in the porcelain throne, and 47% of you say, bring bring out the gimp, bring out the gimp, I think the gimp's sleeping, you best, you best, wake him up. <laughs> Time four, one of three. You may already be doing this, but I would recommend you actively network your way to talk to Turley or Dershowitz or whoever you believe would be of value in carrying this case forward. In my honest opinion, and the author is never humble. I'm going to give you one of these just so I can get that out of the way. <laughs> Passively posting it on Twitter X and hoping to make a love connection is going to take longer than you have. During last night's Twitter, multiple people, including me, talked Tur Turley, Dershowitz, Secular Levin, Levin's, maybe Ted, you're trying to say, Levin's producer, Landmark Legal, Hannity, etc. If you still haven't found, heard from them, that didn't do the trick. Well, I do think that's possible that if I send something out that it'll get share it a lot more and that they'll get they'll get to them especially since i started calling in on people who have more clout on twitter than i have you know closer to like a million type of followers and ask them to share but you could be correct i don't know i mean i reached out to some people saying hey can you hook me up with 
Dersh. So far, no luck. I thought if I stayed in the back of the line, I didn't have to shovel, but could still wear my blue fringe tracks. <laughs> Please let us get another Roger Stone deposition. That would be awesome. Is an Amish keyboard made out of wood? Pine. Let me see where I'm at here. 53% of you want the under, 19% say give me the over, and 28% say what's a line. So, all right. All right, let's see what she did. Let's see if she mentions convicted perjurer. Falsified his business records, kicked off the civil fraud investigation in New York, leading to that $464 million fine. Like Daniels, Cohen and Trump have sued each other, and like Daniels, Trump detests Cohen. But they Ooh. Like, we, we love him now. You hated Michael Cohen before, before he was convicted. There's another person in this courtroom who Trump hates a lot, and that person is Justice Juan Mershon. Because even before he... It's not justice. It's judge. It's not justice. See, this, this is what tells me that you don't know what the heck you're talking about. It's not justice. Supreme Court judges in New York are never referred to as justice. It's judge. He denied all of Trump's motions in this trial. The judge presided over the tax... In the appellate court, they might be referred to as justices, but not in the Supreme Court. So I don't know who this woman is. I don't know if she's, I don't know if she's some transactional attorney, but here she is weighing in here. And that's just... Okay. Broad case against the Trump Organization and its longtime chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg. Weisselberg pled guilty in the scheme to pay himself with pre-tax dollars and stiff Uncle Sam in the New York Revenue Authority. But he steadfastly refused to give up Trump himself. Justice Mershon sentenced Weisselberg to five months. You're still calling him justice? <sighs> ...at Rikers Island Prison, earning Trump's everlasting ire, while admitting that Justice Mershon is a very... Is it always justice? distinguished looking man trump called him a true and certified trump hater who suffers from a very serious case of trump derangement syndrome there's no there's no exclamation point here and who treated alan weisselberg viciously naturally trump has spewed a fire hose of invective at daniels cohen and mershon in the lead up to this trial which is gross no it's not gross why is that gross but it also endangers both the targets of his rage and the integrity of the trial itself. How so? What about when they what about when they spew invective at him? Where's where's your where's your thought about 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 Sixth Amendment rights? Fourteenth Amendment rights. It's really Fourteenth Amendment. Where do you care about due process here? How is that gross? This is so gross. Because brass tacks, who would want to be a witness or sit on a jury if it meant being put on blast? They're literally attacking him. They're getting paid millions of dollars to attack him. Unbelievable. To millions of armed, angry MAGA supporters. MAGA supporters. Are you a MAGA supporter? Are you a MAGA supporter? <laughs> millions of armed, angry MAGA supporters. <laughs> Uh, that coalition, the union of million, the, the union of armed, angry MAGA supporters. Uh, last month, when I was at my armed, angry MAGA supporter meeting, we actually voted that no one can carry more than three weapons into a meeting. So I don't know why it is that they're so freaked out here. So freaked out. On February 26, District Attorney Alvin Bragg's office filed a 331-page motion to restrict Trump's extra... 331-page motion, of which it was like 25 to 30 pages of him actually writing and a whole bunch of... a whole bunch of relatively meaningless... Um, ridiculous exhibits. Like affidavits of people saying, I was scared. In other cases, like three three hundred thirty one page sounds like 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 wow that's just a mountain right there that's a mountain right there it's like so much stuff that's irrelevant to this particular case it's shocking. 
extrajudicial statements. In other words, they requested a gag order. Prosecutors pointed to the defendant's long history of making public and inflammatory remarks about participants in various judicial proceedings. Tell us about landmark communications in Shepard v. Maxwell. Tell us about that. Proceedings against him, including jurors, witnesses, lawyers, and court staff. And they pointed to the inevitable reactions they incite from defendants, followers, and allies. You don't know that. You don't know that it's incited by that, do you? Prosecutors asked the court to limit Trump's public attacks, which, quote, pose a significant and imminent threat to the orderly administration of this criminal proceeding and a substantial likelihood of causing material prejudice. That's speculative. You might be right, but the problem you have is that it's speculative and the Supreme Court says it has to be a certainty. They also noted the many, many people who have suffered threats and harassment after Trump sicked his supporters on them. Sicked his supporters on them? Did he say, go harass these people? Did he say that? Did he say that? Because it has to be direct. That's at least what the Supreme Court says. I don't know. Are you going to give law here? Give law. You're telling over this, this, this narrative here. I'm not seeing much in the, this is very, very thin on law. It's very, very thin on law. What I'm seeing here is basically what, like, like Rachel Maddow type of report of like, oh, let me tell you this, this, this very, very slanted perspective about the narrative of what happened here without any law. So I'm, I'm waiting for some law. Give us some law. Give us the law. You're teaching us about gag law. Come on. From Atlanta poll workers Ruby Freeman and Shay Moss to former Arizona. Really? Was that in this case? Ruby, Ruby Freeman was in this case in New York? Was that it? I want to help Speaker Rusty Bowers to Fulton County District Attorney Bonnie Willis to E. Jean Carroll to Trump. Were any, which ones were in this case? Name one. Trump's own Vice President Mike Pence. Oh my God. Uh, I, can't, I don't know if I can show that part on YouTube. Let's get past that. My God. Is this woman, a, is she a, who's Liz Dye? Is she a lawyer? I assumed she was a lawyer. That's why Legal Eagle is sending us over to, like, you know, his right hand girl. Who is she? So, author at Above the Law, Long Chaos. Is she a lawyer? A legal journalist who covers the legal stories that affect our politics, especially the Trump saga in the Supreme Court. <laughs> she isn't a lawyer, is she? She's not. I don't know. What's a legal journalist? Look at this. Look at this. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. That's true for Travis Stein. It's true if you want to participate in whatever's left of America's American democracy. God. It's insufferable. Insufferable. Wow. I'm just trying to find out if she's a lawyer. Where did you, did you go to law school? I'm not saying she's not. I really don't know. I'm really curious. Because so far we literally got no law. All we got is this narrative. I'm not sure if she's a lawyer, a historian. I don't know what's happening here. Is she a journalist? What, what's... Nation cases who noted that Trump has a long standing and perhaps singular history of using social media, speeches, rallies, and other public statements to attack individuals that he considers to be adversaries, including. Have, is there, do you have one instance? Point to one instance that we know that this thing that he said was directly and, and overtly causing a reaction from any other individual that caused them to do something. One, one instance, because I'm, I'm fairly certain he would have been charged with incitement if that happened. 
including courts, judges, various law enforcement officials, and other public officials, and even individual jurors in other matters. The motion referenced a ruling by Judge Chanya Chutkin in Trump's election interference case, who concluded that when defendant has publicly attacked individuals, those individuals are consequently threatened and harassed. Is it is it because of that, or is it that we're talking about correlative rather than causative? And the DA included more than 50 pages of Trump's social media posts to prove the point, like three days after he was indicted in the D.C. election interference case when he said, if you go after me, I'm coming after you. Great. What happened? That was at 3.16 a.m. What? How long after that were there, was there, were there, were there calls in? When, when? Was there a single call that came in? Was there a single thing that was illegal that was done by some third party? Was there anything that happened? Was there even anything rude that happened at, at between 3.16 in the morning and, I don't know, 5 o'clock in the morning? Anything. Anything. Tell us what that is. Tell us what that is. Rather than being, I don't know, three days before that or a week later. Like, which thing that he said, this is what's so stupid about this. Is this an illegal statement? Or when he suggested that people who well, wait, wait, it should be like if you go if you come after me, I'll I'll roll over and say I'm sorry. Well, what this is the stupidest. This is like I don't even know what, what's going through their heads. He's scary, scary. This is, just doesn't make any sense. Cooperated with the government were weaklings and cowards and so bad for the future of our failing nation. Or the dozens of times he called Attorney General Letitia James racist and used a word that is this close to a racial slur to describe her. Actually, it's kind of amazing that it wasn't 3,000 pages. Which word here is a racial slur or close to a racial slur? Is it peekaboo? Is there something? Like, how do you read between the lines and come to these things? After I don't even know what, I don't know what, I don't know what that means. To bar Trump from speaking. I don't know what the meaning of peekaboo is. I have no idea what that is. Being about known or reasonably foreseeable witnesses, lawyers in the case, other than the district attorney Bragg himself, members of the court staff. What's the what's the what's the legal standard that that warrants what you're saying? He's signed off on. Give us the legal standard. And the district attorney staff and their family members and the jurors. Trump's lawyers yelled that the First Amendment under the state. What was the legal standard? We still don't know. We still don't know. Why do you leave your audience so ignorant? What is the legal standard? Just tell us what it is. Even if you think he, you obviously think that, that Judge Juan Rashan met the legal standard. Can you at least tell us that? State and federal constitutions requires that President Trump's ability to respond to public attacks relating to this case as he continues his leading campaign for the presidency be afforded the highest level of constitutional protections, which is lawyers speak for. First Amendment. Our client has a constitutional right to whip his supporters into a rage. To no, it's our client's constitutional right to first to the free speech. And if he actually had whipped them into a rage, he would have been charged with incitement. And if so, charge him. Directed at parties to his criminal case because he's running for president. And Trump's lawyers capped it all off by claiming that gagging Trump because of something his supporters might do is a classic heckler's veto, which the First Amendment categorically forbids. A Notice when she's going through the arguments here, we're not going to see my legal arguments in his attorney's papers. Heckler's veto is when government officials censor a speaker because they fear her speech will spark a protest. The ACLU of Michigan... Is that really what Heckler's veto is? Uh... Um... Right. When someone exercises their First Amendment right to free speech, the government is not allowed to shut down the speech just because other people don't like the message that is being conveyed. This is known okay. as the rule against the heckler's veto. It's classically been used to shut down civil rights protests on the theory that they will provoke a violent backlash. Although, of course... Really? That's how the it's been used. That's how the heckler. That's how the heckler veto has. I don't know what she's. Have also ruled that it was a heckler's veto for states to refuse assembly permit. 
Yeah, that's a heckler's veto. See? Can't do that. Can't do that. And you guys all think that he's... Display of swastikas stickers before survivors of the Holocaust cannot be enjoined. To do so, according to the court, would violate the party members' right to free expression on the First Amendment. This author recognizes the right of the American Nazi Party to express its political beliefs by demonstrating in the village of Skokie, despite the prospect of violent opposition. Permits to neo Nazis out of. Fear that allowing them to march would start a riot. But that's not what's going on here. When a woman named Abigail Jo Schrei called up Judge Chutkin's chambers to spew death threats and racial slurs, she wasn't heckling Donald Trump. She was riled up by his constant screaming about the judge on social media. That's not what the whole heckler veto is about. This is, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Which Trump's lawyers knew perfectly well. You don't know what the heck you're talking about here. You don't know what you're talking about. Draw the distinction here. Tell us how this is different than the Skokie. Tell us, tell us how it's different. Because in Skokie, when you have a rally there, that might inspire some, God forbid, some 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 Yahtzees to go do it's to, to go do things that are pretty terrible. How is this any different? How is this any different? Well. And if they didn't remember it from law school, they knew it because multiple courts have already reminded them of it. <laughs> the D.C. Circuit already lectured them in December that this argument misunderstands the heckler's veto doctrine. Well, respectfully, I believe the D.C. Circuit Court misunderstands several Supreme Court cases that talk about free speech. Because they, they seem to think that there's license to, to impose a gag order, a, restraint on prior, uh, a, a prior restraint on free speech, when you're not even standing up for constitutional right. And that seems to be completely contrary to every Supreme Court case on this. So I don't know that I really, I don't know if the Supreme, I don't know DC Circuit Court really did an analysis that does justice in that particular case. That doctrine prohibits restraining speech on the grounds that it might offend a hostile mob hearing the message or because its audience might express hostility to the message. The harm that the district court identified here was not that some members of the public who oppose Mr. Trump's message might react violently and try and shut down his speech. The concern was instead how predictable it has become that some, but certainly not all, or even many of Mr. Trump's followers will act menaciously in response to his work. But we don't know that any of them have ever acted Dominaciously. That's the problem. You don't know. Where is the, tell me what, give me where the evidence is that one of them has acted menaciously in response to something that he said, rather than just to events as they've been unfolding in ways that seem like they want to make him into a martyr. But this isn't Trump's first rodeo. So Justice Mershon had a template to work from. In October, Judge Chutkin issued a gag order in the election interference case. She rejected Trump's arguments about the heckler's veto and special First Amendment rights for presidential candidates because equal justice under the law requires equal treatment of criminal defendants and... So which criminal defendants have you gagged recently besides him? Which one? Tell me, tell me the one you gagged. I, I'd really be curious to hear about that. The defendant's presidential candidacy cannot excuse statements that would otherwise intolerably jeopardize these proceedings. Again... She imposed restrictions on Trump's out-of-court statements to mitigate the significant and immediate risk that witnesses will be intimidated or otherwise unduly influenced by the prospect of being themselves targeted for harassment or threats. Significant and immediate risk based on what? It's their fear or that they actually are at risk? Because their fear is nothing, under the law at least. I'm not, I'm not, look, and I want to be clear here about something because, you know, I have talked about this a number of times and I want to be clear about something. And that is, I, I'm not looking for people to be living in fear. I'm simply saying it's not a legal argument. There's no recognition on the Supreme Court that that has any sort of impact. And there is a duty on the court to try and find any other way to ameliorate any type of concerns especially when you don't know that there's a compelling need because you don't know that it's a result of anything he said rather than events unfolding in a way that basically paint him 
Like he's a martyr. Like, I don't know, inventing new ways to charge penal code 17510. That's one way. Bringing Rico charges him in state court for what? For, 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 for actions he takes as president? That there's authority there for the state court to actually weigh in on his actions that he takes in, in the ambit of his presidency? For J6, even though there's no charge of incitement? And attorneys, public servants, and other court staff will themselves become targets for threats and harassment. Yeah, the court has expressly said, uh, I should show you. Um, yeah, threats for, you cannot excuse them. They're not, they're not protectable. I mean, the Supreme Court has actually said that outright. Specifically, Judge Chutkin barred Trump from making comments about. I'll pull it up for you. I don't want, I don't want you to take my word for it. I'll pull it up for you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Don't take my word for it. I'm going to show you in my papers where I make that point. <laughs> Landmark Communications, first case he cites, says... The law gives judges as persons or courts as institutions no greater immunity from criticism than other persons or institutions, citing Bridges v. California. This is from Landmark Communications. The operations of the courts and the judicial conduct of judges are matters of utmost public concern, meaning that's why – why do you think Judge, why do you think Judge Merchant did, didn't try – putting a gag on criticizing him individually because of this statement here that his operations are matters of utmost concern. You can't gag that. Well, what, what about operations of courts? Who's doing that? Oh, it's staff of, it's his staff. And that's why I'm, that's why I write, I write over here, accordingly landmark directly invalidates sections B1 and B2 of the orders, which purport to insulate counsel and members of the court staff and direct and district attorney staff from criticism levied in future Trump statements, because you have here expressly saying that you can't insulate them just because they're part of operations. Unbelievable. Did you read this case, lady? Did you read Landmark Communications? You didn't read it. I don't know. Maybe I'm the best one to argue this. But the prosecutors, court staff, or witnesses in that case. <laughs> And with a few minor tweaks, the D.C. Circuit affirmed that ruling, which meant that D.A. Bragg did not have to reinvent the wheel in New York and hope that it would pass First Amendment muster. He could just ask for what the D.C. Circuit had already greenlighted and replicate the appellate court's legal reasoning. Bragg's only additional request was an order preventing the defendant from attacking jurors. And luckily, or unluckily, Trump was kind enough to supply the prosecutors with a mountain of evidence there, too. In the Fulton County RICO case, he accused the foreperson of the racist DA special grand jury of doing a media tour revealing the grand jury's inner workings and thoughts. After Trump calls it an illegal kangaroo court, the grand jurors were doxxed online. And in 2020, when his buddy Roger... And what makes you think they wouldn't have been doxxed anyway? Like, if he didn't have access to social media, there's every likelihood that this would have happened as well. Stone was convicted by a unanimous jury on seven counts of obstruction, false statements, and witness tampering. Trump attacked that jury's four persons. Which it's unclear whether obstruction charges are being going to be overturned by the Supreme Court because they're reviewing the, whether or not obstruction has been wrongly misapplied by the prosecutors and the courts in all of these cases, including the J6 cases. Person as well. I guess from what I hear, a very strong woman, a very dominant person. So she can get people to do whatever she wants. And she got on, then she became the four person, four woman on the jury. And they started looking at, now how can you have a jury pool tainted so badly? The four person attested that she faced a barrage of harassment and still felt unsafe. Other Maybe she, did she, when, when did that start? Because I remember when she was made public and that was long before he made any statements. And I'm sure, I'm sure based on how she looked in public, likely, likely, 
she probably faced a barrage before Trump mentioned her. That's what I'm saying. We don't know it's that his statements. Sure is testing. And we have to know. That's the thing. You have you cannot do it based on speculation. The Supreme Court has been expressed that it must be, it, it has to be um it has to be without without any speculation. You have to have knowledge that that's what's doing it before you can even think about engaging in a in a gag order. That the threat of being exposed and harassed for jury service creates a situation where people may not be willing to serve as jurors. In fact, Trump's big. So then you can move to a different location. See, there's there's all these different there's all these different issues with respect to that. Mouth supplied reams of evidence for the DA, whose motion had sections on the current criminal case, the DC case, New York Attorney General civil fraud action, the Fulton County RICO prosecution, the Atlanta poll workers he harassed, the Roger Stone case, and a general heading on defendants' advocacy of revenge and retribution against. So, are you going to tell me that hate that sent at Nancy Pelosi is also because of things he tweets? This is like so. This is so. I mean, it's. <sighs> perceived opponents. Trump's lawyers responded with the very same arguments that got rejected by the D.C. Circuit. Really? Again with this? And those arguments did not fare any better with Justice Mershon, who noted that he'd held off on issuing a gag order, choosing instead to issue an admonition at the beginning of the case, when he cautioned Trump and his lawyers to behave themselves. Instead, Trump attacked Cohen, Daniels, and the DA. He actually cautioned all sides to behave themselves, and we see exactly how well Michael Cohen has behaved himself but nothing. As well as the judge himself. So Justice Mershon granted the gag order, after which Trump went silent and started acting like a responsible adult. April Fools! What he actually did was go on a social media bender attacking Justice Mershon's daughter. Not bender, it was one post. <laughs> bender, a bender of one post. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt, Liz, but if you're going to attack the judge's daughter, you probably want a good lawyer. But if you want a great lawyer... Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Please. Please. Line ...and falsely claimed that she was Senator Chuck Schumer's girlfriend. Yeah, that was obviously facetious. Attacking a civil servant is beyond inappropriate. Mm, it's completely legal. Not to mention, at least according to Lamar Communications, the case that was cited by Justice Mershon, the first case he cited in his gag order. Really, really stupid. Well, that might be. <laughs> that that could be. That could be a dumb thing to do. Although he was pointing out how ridiculously, how unusual the scenario was. Let's put it that way: how unusual the scenario was with the clerk, with Justice Engelrun's law clerk, which I've never seen him before. Since judges are hugely protective of their staff. That's true. So that that's actually a fair point as far as strategically, that you're basically ticking off the judge. It's difficult to think that that's what got him going. And if so, that's disconcerting. So Trump's lawyers got him to take it down immediately. And they pinky promised to Justice Arthur Engeron that he'd never do it again. But of course, he did do it again. At which point his lawyers gave up and joined in, making attacks on the clerk central to their claim of judicial bias. When they appealed the gag order, a court safety... Because what they saw was very unusual. They'd never seen it either. No one's ever seen it. Can you tell us any other judge, which you'll probably call a justice, in the New York Supreme Court system, which has a clerk sitting next to him passing notes in the middle of a trial? Because that's unusual. It's very unusual. And she has been a very vocal anti-Trump individual. So that's... Also, disconcerting. The officer supplied the court with dozens of pages documenting the avalanche of death threats and anti-Semitic abuse that rained down on the judge and his clerk thanks to Trump's social media posts. The appellate panel reinstated the order, after which Trump immediately shifted to attacking Justice Engeron's wife and son, who weren't covered by the order. Based on nothing but rumors on social media, he insisted that an anonymous anti-Trump Twitter account belonged to the judge's wife. And he posted images of a random ball... Was he wrong? Was he wrong? You don't know, do you? <laughs> so you think he was right? You think he was right? He just... Got otherwise, you would have said that. ...declaring that he was Justice Engeron's son, enjoying the perks of access to his father's big trial. None... I didn't see... I never saw those tweets, but that's kind of funny, actually. I don't know if he meant it seriously. It's pretty funny. I don't know if this was true. Mrs. Engeron does not tweet, and the bald guy was a New York Post reporter. 
But I bet mm -hmm. you can see where this is going. Immediately after the gag order blocking him from attacking Cohen and Daniels, Trump pivoted to attacking the judge and his family. He complained. That Again, this is all, this is supposed to be legal analysis. This is a legal analyst here. And all we're getting here is narrative. The judge Juan Mershon, who is suffering from an acute case of Trump derangement syndrome, whose daughter represents crooked Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Adam Shifty Schiff, and other. Where's, is there an exclamation point here? I don't see that. Why is she reading it like this? I feel like I'm getting a poor reading. At least try to do a Trump voice. Other radical liberals has just posted a picture of me behind bars, her obvious goal, and makes it completely impossible for me to get a fair trial. Just does sound it does sound like it's on it's it's gonna be difficult if assuming it's true. This Mayor Sean's daughter does indeed run a democratic political consultancy. And obviously that's got nothing. That's that should be completely no concern to anyone. Why would anyone have a concern about that? Why? Just because she works for Kamala Harris? Why? But that is not her Twitter account. Oh. oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. She says it's not. Maybe she's telling the truth. Could be. Court spokesman released a statement confirming that Justice Mershon's daughter had deleted the account a year ago. He said that it was not linked to her email address, nor has she posted under that screen name since she deleted the account. Someone else has picked up the handle and is now manipulating an account she long ago abandoned. Okay, maybe. I don't know. It shouldn't be that hard to establish that, right? I mean, like, you get an IP, do a search, get an IP. That should be, it shouldn't be too hard to validate. But Trump, who ignored the court's denial that Justice Angeron's wife was posting anti-Trump memes, was not concerned about accuracy. So he just kept on yelling that the judge's daughter is allowed to post pictures of her dream of putting me in jail. This is all part of one post and speculating that the judge is such a hater because his daughter makes money by working to get Trump. And There's no refutation of his claim also that she's talking to him about the case. When he rules against me over and over again, he is making her company and her richer and richer. Maybe she, maybe, maybe that, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true. Do you know that's not true? Do you know she's not making more money? Again, normal people don't behave this way. If you are a criminal defendant, the last person on earth you're trying to annoy is the judge in your case. But Trump is not normal. So he just plowed ahead, knowing full well that it would subject the judge's daughter to a torrent of harassment. I love how everyone thinks they know, they, they, they. <laughs> I can't say anything on this. I'm sorry, I can't say anything on this right now. Assessment and threats. And his buddies at Fox News and the New York Post ran stories featuring this woman's name and picture too. On April 1, the DA filed a motion asking the court to either clarify that attacking family members of the judge and the DA is forbidden under the original gag order or expanding the order to cover family members. Because it wasn't under the original one. <laughs> That's why he changed it. He also noted that Trump has gone after DA Bragg's wife as well. Prosecutors wrote that Trump knows what he is doing and everyone else does too. He has That's an allegation said for decades that he attacks his perceived opponents viciously and violently, both because it is a good feeling and because other people will see you doing it. He promised very recently that if you go after me, I'm coming after you. Very recently. I think it was a year earlier, wasn't it? Wasn't that what you showed us? It was a year ago. He is carrying out that promise right now. Now, again, in a normal circumstance. Think. I'm not sure. I don't remember the date of that. Tweet. The attorneys here would prostrate themselves before the court and say, we are so sorry, Your Honor, our client will never do that again. Please do not sanction us. No, you see, you no, you see, that's not what you would do if Trump was your client. I, I don't, so this makes me question whether she's actually a litigation, if she's actually an attorney, a, a, a litigation attorney. Or she's so slanted that like no one would say, I, you'd have to be an idiot to say that about Trump. Given his given his history, like you wouldn't do that. That would just it's such a it's such a it's such a ridiculous take because you know that you he's probably going to keep posting out there. So you wouldn't say we promise he's never going to do that again. That would make Alina, Alina Haba made that mistake once. Why would they? Why would these attorneys do that? That's pretty dumb. But that's not what happened here. Instead, Trump's lawyers insisted that attacking the judge's family is core political speech. 
It was because the whole point was. And they argued that Justice Marshawn had violated judicial ethics by having the court spokesman make that statement to the press. Because the point is not about the daughter, but the, the impact this has on the judge. So it's not a statement about the daughter. It's a statement about the judge and his the fact that Trump believes that the judge is compromised because of his daughter. It's not a matter of like she's making money on it, but that the impact that the potential for that may have on Judge Mershon. How is that not an attack on the judge? Denying that the Twitter account belonged to his daughter. They claimed that Justice Mershon himself was to blame for having his child doxxed because if he just recused himself when they'd asked him to, then Trump wouldn't have had to aim his social media rage cannon at the judge and his family. Because if you think about it, spreading lies about the judge's daughter is properly understood as a- You admitted it was, that part of it was true. <laughs> you admit that the key part that she's making money is true. Criticism of the court's prior decision not to recuse itself. Yeah, okay. Wow, is it, is it really though? Yeah, is it really though? Oh, okay, here's someone. Here's someone who might disagree with you a little bit. They've put together a composite of issues that would cause me a little bit of pause. And I can explain all the various things that they've put together. The main focus of this motion as- This is talking about Trump's motion she's talking about now. Opposed to the previous one a year ago, which the judge denied, is on the daughter's line of work. As you already said, the daughter does work with many, many high profile Democratic candidates. She works on their social media. They put out a post, they get contributions. She as an owner gets a percentage of those contributions. So there is a statute in New York, which says a judge must disqualify himself. If a person known by the judge to be within the sixth degree of relationship and a daughter is the first degree. Has first degree, first degree. Interest that could be substantially affected by the outcome of the proceeding. So the question here is, is this daughter likely to profit, to benefit from the outcome of this proceeding? And you have to understand, it's not actual conduct that's worrisome. It's the appearance, the appearance to a reasonable person oh. that this judge cannot be fair and impartial. Given so we don't even need to know that she would, just we have to, we have to basically assess whether the public believes that she would. And that is when he should recuse himself under, okay. Than that relationship. So ordinarily, I would think that a benefit financially would be to a spouse because they share the income. This is an independent adult daughter. They don't share income. Mm -hmm. But according to this, according to this statute, according to this statute, the judge must recuse if she would substantially benefit from the outcome. So that's one thing that concerned me. But if you add to that a few other facts that are of concern, at least to me, was the judge's original contribution to uh, President Biden four years ago, which he made himself, very small contribution, $35. Yeah, I think it was $10, right? $35, $35 I'm told, $35. Uh, a small contribution, but he made it through AtBlue himself on the internet. He did give an interview where he said he wouldn't comment on the case, but then he said he's been intensely preparing and he wants to be fair and impartial and justice is important. He and his daughter discussed the former president's use of social media, which the judge condemned in that discussion, and, and she, the daughter reported on it. The Office of Court Administration There's said- There's no denial they discussed the case. So they discussed the case, which is a little unusual. I, don't, I wouldn't expect them to be talking to his daughter about every case. I'm not surprised about, that they talked about this case, if you think about it, because for a judge, it's a pretty big deal to be the first judge to be presiding over a case of a former president and a GOP presumptive presidential candidate. So I'm not surprised that he is, but it does make it all the more concerning to the public. And, you know, it's natural. The daughter's Twitter account ended a year ago. So any recent uh, posts on that were not from the daughter. Yeah. And I kind of wonder... Well, Why I... the Office of Court Administration was defending the daughter. So there, if you put all these together, is my point.
it, it's certainly enough that maybe a reasonable person could have a doubt about impartiality. So I think it's kind of a serious motion. I realize it's 10 days before the trial and don't expect it to be granted. Right. So, um, but it does leave for him an appeal. So, and yet we have here, we have this, we have legal legal saying, where were you? I don't know where you were. No, I lost here. I'll find it. Yeah. They go, Liz Dye here saying, it's a crazy motion. Crazy, crazy perspective here. Crazy. Uh, that's a retired judge, Shailen, who says, not at all. It's pretty good. It's pretty good motion, but this is informing. This is informative. Unsurprisingly, the judge was not persuaded by this argument. He granted the request to expand the gag order, writing that this pattern of attacking family members of presiding jurists and attorneys assigned to his cases serves no legitimate purpose. It merely injects fear in those assigned or called to participate in the proceedings that not only they, but their family members as well, are fair game for defendants' vitriol. Which I, I, I'm just going to point out, it's to the extent that it's having an influence here. The court also threatened that if Trump didn't knock it off, he'd forfeit any statutory right he may have to access juror names if he engages in any conduct that threatens the safety and integrity of the jury or the jury selection process. Since then, Trump has posted links on Truth Social to articles about Justice Mershon's wife and daughter, all but daring the court to react. Rolling Stone reports that Trump is confident that no court will jail him during the campaign. According to a source, he thinks these judges have tried to be tough guys, tried to rattle him, and then it was all talk. He said this time it's the same. He has to show he's not afraid of these people. Simple as that. And so far, he's been right. Although it did cost him half a billion dollars in judgment. Guess we'll... Sort of need to think through that potential issue rising up in my motion. I've got to think about that. Find out soon if that luck runs out. Yeah, Trump's trial is officially underway, but true to form and surprising absolutely no one, he has not stopped talking about this case. On the weekend before the trial, Trump bashed Michael Cohen, Stormy Daniels, and the judge's daughter. Uh, so before the jury was impaneled, the prosecution introduced a motion to sanction Trump for the social media posts. And here are the problematic statements. First, Trump said, quote, has disgraced attorney and felon Michael Cohen been prosecuted for lying? Then Trump referred to future witnesses Cohen and Daniels as two sleazebags who have, with their lies and misrepresentations, cost our country dearly. By the way, never once did they say convicted perjurer. Never once. Amazingly, that post was part of a thank you note to disgraced Democratic attorney Michael Avenatti, who is now in federal prison for defrauding his clients, including Stormy oh, Daniels. Oh, his, now that he's standing up for Trump and the fact that this gag order is unconstitutional, so now all of a sudden he's no longer your friend. Okay. Kills herself. Now, a cynic could conclude that Avenatti changed his tune on Trump because he could really use a Trump pardon. But the gag order prevents Trump from talking about witnesses' participation in the case, and both Cohen and Daniels are expected to be key witnesses for the prosecution. Prosecutor Christopher Conroy argued that Trump, quote, has demonstrated his willingness to flout the order. He's attacked witnesses in the case. Uh, Trump lawyer Todd Blanche argued that the post criticizing Cohen and Daniels don't violate the order because, uh, quote, it is not as if former President Trump is going off and targeting individuals. He's responding to salacious repeated attacks by these witnesses. And yeah, it's a tightrope between wanting an orderly courtroom and allowing the defendant to have First Amendment rights. Oh, now, here we go. Here we go. A little law. All right. All right. 18 minutes in of a 20 minute video. We're getting a little law. All right. A little balancing, a little balancing test here. Judge expanded the order to include attacks on his family. Trump continued to repost news articles criticizing Judge Mershon's daughter. And the prosecution is seeking fines of $1,000 for each of the three potential violations, which isn't much, but it makes sense for a nominal punishment, setting the foundation for larger sanctions if the behavior continues. Now, Trump and his lawyers have vowed to fight all gag orders, and Trump campaign spokesman Steve Chung said, Not quote, just his lawyers. The gag order violates the Not civil just his lawyers fighting gag orders rights of over 100 million Americans who follow President Trump and have a First Amendment right to receive and listen to his speech. Judge Mershon has set a hearing on the motion for Tuesday, April 23rd at 9.30 a.m. Now, if dealing with all those shenanigans makes you want to have a few drinks, I, I wouldn't blame you. But if you want to feel better the day after, I recommend today's sponsor, Z-Biotics. Now, no, I, I, I don't. So. All right. I think it's time for us to start working towards landing our plan. What we got here? What we got here? What we got here? 
Yes, they're still pushing that. That's true. She's not a lawyer. She just plays one on YouTube. I know the feeling. The problem with propaganda is that it works. That's true. This is painful. I believe people actually buy into the madness too. That means there's no hope of fixing what's broken. There's no middle ground. That's a big problem. It's a very big problem that there is so little middle ground. She has books behind her. She knows things. Insufferable. For, I told you. I told you. You're going to... You're gonna, and look, I never endorse violence. And I'm not going to start changing that now. But I am... It's almost like when, when Bill Burr says, don't say there's not a reason. <laughs> don't say there's never a reason. Don't Look, it, you don't do it. That's totally, you know, I stand by what I was saying in the beginning of this show. You definitely, definitely, definitely should never do that. Never. But it should make your blood boil. First of all, they act as tough as the lefties' hysterical reaction to Trump words are somehow evidence, apparently, to this judge they are. That's what it seems kind of like, you know. Bet she's 55 year old unmarried. I think she's married, actually. I think she is married. 99% sure not lawyer. She's a blogger, comment, zero rhymes about her, say lawyer, only legal writer and, and podcaster. Also, hand, ha handle is $5 feminist. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 the best, that's the best handle I heard since Four Doors. Since Four Doors. Uh, 1976 was, was my senior college of music. And we did 1776 musical. I played French horn. Love it. It's pretty good musical. It is. It's pretty good musical. Impropriety, conflicts of interest, multiple states harassing the legal candidate and criminally interfering in our electoral process. The RNC must bring RICO charges in response to this madness. Madness, I say. It's chaos. Chaos is happening here in Dropback Hoove. Closing out with three three thousand fines for inciting grave danger. Apparently, apparently. Um, I think it is the point, though. That's the point. It's about making a, a point. K. Dot Ray said Israel struck back at Iran, praying it ends soon, but really hope the U.S. stays out of it. Oh, I totally agree with you on that. Could not agree more. Definitely want the U.S. to stay the heck out of it. Stay out of it. Israel's grown. They can handle it. They've grown. They've grown. They're big boys. They can handle it. Okay. Uh, let me check here. Free Devon says, thanks, Joe. You have me nonstop laughing tonight for every topic. Oh, I'm so glad. Ooh, navy blue and silver together. Yes. That Joe Nearman for the track suit. Navy blue and silver. That's what Divine wants. Navy blue and silver. Maybe. Maybe. All right. I think that's our show for tonight. And this is closing out the weekend. So we end, we end with a gag. I hope you enjoyed it. Not that we got much law there. Very, very little law. Very, very little. Shockingly little law. Anyhow, I will urge you all. All right. If you're on X and the mood strikes you to share out my stuff, share out my stuff while you're here also. I'd, I'd appreciate that because I am trying to draw a lure to just sort of like the... <laughs> trying to lure in a big name. I'll be working my end, but I need help from you guys. So if you can help share that out and encourage people, tag someone you know. But I would say this. Don't bother with Barnes. Don't bother with Ron Coleman. Don't bother with Mark Randazzo. That's what I would suggest. Don't bother with those three. Okay? Not those three. But pretty much anyone else. And if even getting, just getting it out there, you know, I would love if Elon tweeted out like, oh, yeah, okay, free speech, something like that. Oh, my God, would that be amazing? You think that wouldn't get Dershowitz in? I think it might. If Elon asked him, I think it might. Hey, Dersh, why don't you take a look at this case? It looks interesting. It looks intriguing. See if it has any legs. It doesn't have to be quite that size. Even Tim Pool tweeting it out. Or or Megyn Kelly or or Ben Shapiro or or Tuck Carlson or 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 ALX. 
for crying out loud. I mean, how many people out there, like, you know, everyone, everyone talks, everyone talks about how this is so terrible. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, it's so terrible. So I, I carried the ball and I will keep carrying this ball. I will keep carrying this ball. I'm telling you right now, I am not going to leave this hanging and I'll carry it as far as I can, as far as I can. And if I lose here, which frankly, if I don't have any help, I'm fairly sure it's a very high chance I will. Just because it doesn't seem like there's a lot, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like they they're taking me very seriously here. So I will appeal, and I'll appeal to the court of appeals, and I'll appeal to the Supreme Court. And I don't look at a loss as being like this is disastrous because, frankly, if we win at the highest level, as I as I tweeted out earlier in this week, this loss, assuming we lose in is here, means that we lost New York City. It means that if we win at the court of appeals level, that means we it's a win for the entire state. If we would have won if a win in the first department is a win for New York City. A win in the court of appeals is a win for New York State. A win in the Supreme Court is a win for the entire country. So will we get in there? I don't know. I don't know. But we certainly if I can get some help from someone who's actually really, you know, knows what they're doing here, and especially if they've garnered respect from someone. I think, you know, if they have if they have a little gravitas behind their name. What's the name of that guy who who argued in the second impeachment? The one who said hypocrisy. Van something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he does this. I don't know if he'd be willing. You got to find someone who has enough of an interest in it that they would work on it. I'm, I'm not going to be raising money for this. I'm not going to be coming to you and say, I need to raise $50,000 to, to hire this attorney. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'll do it myself for free before I do that. That's my personal take on this. I'll do it for myself for free um, before I, I, I go I go asking for money on this. And maybe I'm wrong for taking that perspective. Maybe because this is for everyone else, I should do that. But I, I, I'm not going to do that. That's just not who I am. So... Um, I want to say thank you, by the way, to Elizabeth, who sent me, uh, who's routinely sending me fifty dollars out of pop. And those of you, there are a handful of you who sent me money on on Venmo and PayPal. It's not my way of asking for it, but while I was thinking about this, I just wanted to acknowledge those of you out there, like Haley and others, who are routinely sending me money. At the end of the week, it's a good time for me to acknowledge my my that I they don't I don't not notice it. I do I do notice it. There are a handful of new ones even this week on on PayPal. So, yeah, I just wanted to tell you, I appreciate it and acknowledge it. And if you can sign up at goodlaunches.locals.com, I'd appreciate that, certainly. Certainly, that's help. That's 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 really that's really what I want, goodlaunches.locals.com. And publicize as much as you can. I hope to be back here, God willing, on Saturday night. Next week, I'm going to be off here on Sunday night, Monday night. I'll try to be back here on Tuesday night. I'll try to be back here on Tuesday night, but it's going to be Passover. So I'm not going to be here on those nights. But I will be here Saturday night, God willing. That's the plan. That is the plan. So I'm probably going to be on layback law, at least for a little bit tomorrow. With that, I thank you all for joining me, my friends. And I look forward to seeing you, God willing, on Saturday night. I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. I thank you, oh, as always, for joining me. I'm going to tell you that no matter how life, how, how life gets you down, don't give in instead of saying, oh, I'm going to eat the bugs because, no, don't, don't eat the bugs. Sorry, Digger 44 is late. Digger 44 has had his first full trial today. 125K verdict for the client, including 75 impunitives, third person Thursday. Wow, I think that's good. That sounds pretty good. That sounds really good. Congrats. I'm going to give you one of these. Good job, you. Nice. That's awesome. Congratulations, brother. Oh, and... Uh... Bill Dozer says, thanks for all the hard work you're doing. Did my first live stream today. Had a blast. I'm so glad. That's awesome. It's always good getting out and learning, having the opportunity to feel comfortable expressing yourself. Okay. That's my show, and I'm sticking to it. So, yeah. I thank you all for joining me. I'm landing my plane right here. Land it right here and tell you all. Look out for your loved ones. I already did the bug thing, so that's not happening again. Have a good night. And a phenomenal weekend. And as always, 
Godspeed.